pause, we are, we are now live. We're live now. And welcome to a Midnight's Charity Stream. Welcome to the World Elsewhere Theater Company production of a comedy in five acts with theater, cabaret, fundraising, and fairies. Pause. Uh, theater is always given its nature, made of people in a space, and has always been the first victim during times of play. That is why we bring to you this tonight. We also want to fundraise for many important issues of justice. There are many issues with justice in our country, but among the most urgent is bail reform. The profound inequality of how the bail system treats defendants with and without money and the consequential ability of the police to confine people who have not been given a trial is, as Snap would say, a parlous fear. This only grows more true in the world where mass arrests grow common and politicians seek to justify spending, uh, suspending the right to a free and <laughs> speedy trial. Uh, we, I'd like you to uh, invite you to visit worlds.elsewhere.com in order to donate and to see the program. Uh, we've already had several donors, and I'd like to thank them now. Nira Gandhi, Elena and A.D. Greenberg Zed, Kayish uh, Cassius, David J. Bradley, Lovis Wolf, Mars R., Eli Berg Math, Alfred Ben Zant, Rana, Rhonda and Taz, Andrew Morell, Beck, Anna Enriquez, Henry Kassman, Nicholas Franzen, Elish, Jason D, Etienne, Campion Mathon, Jacob Berman, Nico Vizcatusta. <laughs> and now uh, we begin with a, a cabaret performance by Henry Kassman performing Can She Excuse Me My Wrongs by John Dillon. Thank you. Can she excuse my wrongs with virtues clothed? Shall I call her good when she proves unkind? Are those clear fires which vanish into smoke? Must I praise the leaves where no fruits I find? No, no, where shadows do for bodies stand. Thou mayst be abused if thy sights be dimmed. Cold love of like is to words written on sand or to bubbles which on the water swim. Wilt thou be thus abused still, seeing that she may write thee never? If thou canst not overcome thy will, thy love will be thus ruthless ever. Wilt thou be thus abused still, seeing that she may write thee never? If thou canst not overcome thy will, thy love will be thus ruthless ever. Was I so base that I might not aspire Unto those high joys which she holds from me? As they are high, so high is my desire. If she this deny, what can granted be? If she yield to that which all reason is, it is reason's will that love should be just. Dear, make me happy still by granting this, or cut off delays if that I die must. Better a thousand times to die than to have lived a still tormented dear. But remember it, it was I who thy for thy sake died contented. Better a thousand time to die than to have lived a still tormented dear. But remember it, it was I who thy for thy sake died contented. 
Act One, Scene One, Athens, the Palace of Theseus. Enter Theseus, Hippolyta, Philostrate, and attendants. <sighs> ah, now, fair Hippolyta, our nuptial hour draws on apace. Four happy days bring in another moon. Ugh, oh, bethinks how slow this old moon wanes. She lingers my desires, like to a stepdame or a dowager, long withering out a young man's revenue. Four days will quickly steep themselves in night, and four nights will quickly dream away the time. And then the moon, like to a silver bow new bent in heaven, shall behold the night of our solemnities. Go, philosophy. Stir up the Athenian youth to merriments. Awake the purred and nimble spirit of mirth. Turn forth, turn melancholy forth to funerals. The pale companion is not for our pomp. Exit Philostrate. Hippolyta, I wooed thee with my sword, and one thy love doing the injuries, but I will wed thee in another key. With pomp, with triumph, and with reveling. Enter Aegeus, Hermia, Lysander, and Demetrius. Happy be Theseus, our renowned duke. Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Full of vexations come I uh, with complaint against my child, my daughter Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius, my noble lord. Uh, this man hath my consent to wed her. And stand forth, Lysander, and my gracious duke. This man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Oh, thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhyme, and interchanged the love tokens with my child. Oh, thou hast by moonlight at her window sung with feigning voices, verses of feigning love, uh, stolen the impression of her fantasy, mm, with bracelets of thy hair, ring, god, conceits, knack, trifles, nosegays, sweetmeats, messengers of strong prevailment against this heartened youth. Oh, Oh, God, with cunning, thou hast filched my daughter's heart to turn her obedience, which is due to me, and to stubborn harshes and my gracious tooth, uh, to stubborn, be it so she will not be, before your grace, consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg by the ancient law of Athens that, as she is mine, that I may dispose of her which will be either towards this gentleman or to the death, according to our laws, immediately provided in that case. What say you, Hermia? Uh, be advised, fair maid. What to you, your father should be as a god, one that composed your beauties, yeah, and to whom you are but as a form in wax by him imprinted, and within his power to leave the figure or disfigure it, Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. Him himself he is, but in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other must be held the worthier. I would my father looked but with my eyes. Hmm. Rather your eyes with his judgment look, must look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I am made bold, nor how it may concern my modesty in such a presence here to plead my thoughts, but I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires. Know of your youth, examine whether your blood, ex whether... If you yield not to your father's choice, you can endure the livery of a nun. For I to be in a shady cloister and you'd live a barren sister all your life, chanting the fate hymns to the cold fruitless moon, thrice blessed that they may, that they that master so their blood, to undergo such maiden pilgrimage. But earthly or happy is the rose distilled than that which, withering on the virgin thorn, grows lives and dies in single blessedness. 
So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord, ere I will my virgin patent up unto his lordship, whose unwished yoke my soul consents not to give sovereignty. Mm -hmm. Take the time to pause, and by the next new moon, the sealing day betwixt my love and me, for everlasting bond of fellowship, upon that day, either prepare to die for disobedience to your father's will, or else to wed Demetrius as he would, or on Diana's altar protest for I austerity and single life. Relent, sweet Hermia, and Lysander, yield thy crazy title to my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? Oh, scornful Lysander, true he hath my love, and what is my love shall render him, and she is mine, and all the rights of her I do estate unto Demetrius. I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. Oh, my love is more than his. Uh, my fortune's every way as fairly ranked, if not with vantage, as Demetrius, and which is more than all these boasts can be. I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why should not I then prosecute my right? Demetrius, I'll avouch it to his head, made love to Nader's daughter, Helena, and won her soul. And she, sweet lady, dotes, uh, devoutly dotes, dotes in idolatry upon this spotted and inconstant man. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, I must confess that I have heard so much, and with Demetrius thought to have spoke thereof, but being overfull of self-affairs, my mind did lose it. But uh, Demetrius, come, and Aegeus, you shall go with me. I have some private schooling for you both. For you, fair Hermia, look you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will. Or else the laws of Athens yield you up, by which by no means we may extenuate, to death or to a vow of single life. Come, my Hippolyta. Cheer, my love. Demetrius and Aegeus, go along. I must employ you in some uh, business against our nuptial and confer with you of something that nearly uh, concerns yourselves. Uh, with duty and desire, we follow you. Exempt all but Lysander and Hermia. How now, my love? Why is your cheek so pale? How chance the roses there do fade so fast? They like for want of rain, which I could well beteem them from the tempest of my eyes. I mean... For all that I could ever read, uh, could ever hear by tale or history, uh, the course of true love never did run smooth. Uh, either it was different in blood. Oh, cross, too high to be enthralled to low. Or else uh, misgraft in respect of years. Oh, spite, too old to be engaged to young. Or else it stood upon the choice of friends. Oh, hell, to choose love by another's eyes. Or... If there were a sympathy in choice, war, death, or sickness did lay siege to it, making it momentary as a sound, as swift as a shadow, short as any dream, you know, brief as the lightning in the colleague night that in a spleen unfolds both heaven and earth, and ere a man hath power to say, behold, the jaws of darkness do devour it up. So quick, bright things come to confusion. If then true lovers ever have been crossed, it stands as an edict in destiny. Then let us teach our trial patience, because it is a customary cross, as due to love as thoughts and dreams and sighs, wishes and tears, poor fancies followers. A good persuasion. Therefore hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a dowager, of great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens is her house remote, seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee, and to that place the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me then, steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood a league without the town, uh, where I did meet thee once with Helena to do observance to a morn of May, there will I stay for thee. 
My good Lysander, I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest bow, by his best arrow with the golden head, by thy simplicity of Venus doves, by that which knitteth souls and prospers loves, and by that fire which burned the Carthage queen when the false Trojan under sail was seen, by all the vows that ever men have broke, in number more than ever women spoke, in that same place thou hast appointed me, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. He promised love. Uh, look, here comes Helena. Enter Helena. Godspeed, fair Helena. Wither away. Call you me fair. That fair again unsay. Demetrius loves your fair. Oh, happy fair. Your eyes are load stars and your tongue's sweet air more tunable than the lark to the shepherd's ear when the wheat is green and hawthorn buds appear. Sickness is catching. Oh, we're favor so. Yours I would catch, fair Hermia, ere I go. Your ear, my ear should catch your voice, my eye, your eye, my tongue should catch your tongue, sweet melody, were the world mine. Demetrius being baited, the rest I'd give to be you translated. Oh, teach me how you look, and with what art have you sway the motion of Demetrius' heart? I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Oh, that my frown, your frowns could teach my smile such skill. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Oh, that my prayers could such affection move. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hateth me. Oh, his folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty. Well, that fault were mine. Take comfort, he no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. Before the time I did Lysander see, seemed Athens as a paradise to me. Oh, then what graces in my love do dwell that he hath turned a heaven unto a hell. Helen, to you our minds we will unfold. Tomorrow night, when Phoebe doth behold her silver visage in the watery glass, a decking with liquid pearl the bladed grass, the time that lovers' flights doth still conceal. Through Athens' gates have we devised to steal. And in the wood where often you and I upon faint primrose beds were wont to lie, emptying our bosoms of their counsel sweet, there my Lysander and myself shall meet, and thence from Athens turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. Farewell, sweet playfellow. Pray thou for us, and good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Huh. Keep word, Lysander. We must starve our sight from lover's food till morrow deep midnight. I will, my Hermia. Exit, Hermia. Helena, adieu. As you on him, Demetrius dote on you. <laughs> Exit, Lysander. How happy some or other some can be. Through Athens, I am thought as fair as she, but what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all but he do know. And as he errs, doting on Hermia's eyes, though I, admiring of his qualities, things base and vile holding no quantity, love can transpose to form and dignity. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind. And therefore is when Cupid painted blind, nor hath love's mind of any judgment taste, but wings and no eyes figure unheedy haste. And therefore is love said to be a child, for cousin choice he is so oft beguiled, and as waggish boys in game themselves forswear, so the boy love is perjured everywhere. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eyn, he hailed down oaths he was only mine. And when this hail some heat from Hermia felt, so he dissolved. And showers of hold this did melt. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the wood tomorrow night will he pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But here in mean I to enrich my pain to have his sight thither and back again. Exit Helena, scene two, Athens, Quince's house. Enter Quince, snug, bottom, flute, snout, and starveling. Uh, is all our company here? You were best to call them generally, uh, man by man, according to the script. 
Okay. Here is the scroll of every man's name, which is thought fit through all the Athens uh, to play in our interlude before the Duke and the Duchess on his wedding day at night. Uh, first, uh, good Peter Quince, uh, <laughs> say what the play treats on, then read the names of the actors and so grow to a point. Mary, <laughs> our play is uh, the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death <laughs> of Pyramus and Thisbe. A very good piece of work, I assure you, and a Mary. Now, good Peter Quince, call forth your actors by the scroll. Masters, spread yourselves. Answer as I call you. Nick Bottom, the weaver? Ready! Name what part I am for and proceed. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. Uh, what is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? A lover that kills himself most gallant for love. <sighs> that will ask some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms. I, I will uh, condole in some measure uh, to the rest. Uh, yet my chief, chief humor is for a tyrant. I could play Ericles rarely, or a part to tear a cat in to make all split. The raging rocks and shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison gates, and Phoebus' car shall shine from far to make and mar the foolish fates. That was lofty. Uh, now name the rest of the players. This is Ericles' vein, a tyrant's vein. A lover is more condoling. Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Here, Peter Quince. <laughs> Flute, you must take this bee on you. What is this bee, a wandering knight? This bee? It is the lady that Pyramus must love. No faith, let me not play a woman. I have a beard coming. That's all one. You shall play it in a mask, and you may speak as small as you will. And I may hide my face. Uh, let me play Thisbe too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. Uh, Thisbe, Thisbe. Oh, Pyramus, lover dear. Thy Thisbe dear and lady dear. No, no. You must play Pyramus. And flute, you Thisbe. I'll proceed. Robin Starveling, the tailor. Here, yeah, Peter Quince. Robin Starveling, you must play this bee's mother. Tom Snout, the, th the tinker. Here, Peter Quince. <laughs> you, Pyramus' father. Myself, this bee's father, Snug the joiner. You, the lion's part, and I hope that's a play fitted. Have you the lion's part written? Uh, pray, uh, if it be... Give it me, for I am slow of study. You may do it ex tempore, for it's nothing but roaring. Let me play the lion too. I will roar that any man's, do any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar that it will make the duke say, let him roar again, let him roar again. And you should do it too terribly. You would fright the duchess and the ladies that they would shriek and that were enough to hang us all. That would hang us. Every mother's son. I grant you, friends, that if you should fright the ladies out of their wits, they would have no more discretion but to hang us. But I will aggravate my voice so that I will roar you as gently as any sucking dove. I will roar you and twere any nightingale. You can play no part but Pyramus. Mm. For Pyramus, is a sweet-faced man, a proper man, as one shall see in a summer's day, a most lovely, gentleman-like man. Hmm. Therefore, you must need to play Pyramus. Well, I will undertake it. What beard were I best to play it in? Why, what you will. Hmm. I will discharge it in either your straw color beard, your orange tawny beard, your purple and grain beard, your French crown color beard, or your perfect yellow. Some of your fringed crowns have no hair at all, and then you will play barefaced. But, masters, here are your parts, and I am to entreat you, request you, and desire you to con them by tomorrow night and meet me in the palace wood a mile without the town by moonlight. There 
we will rehearse for if we meet in the city, we shall be dogged with company and our devices now. In the meantime, I will draw a bill of properties such as our play wants. I pray you, fail me not. We will meet, and there we may rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Take pains, be perfect, adieu. At the Duke's Oak we meet. Enough, hold or cut bowstrings. Exit Omnis. Wow, I would just like to remind you all that you'll be giving this performance free of charge. And if you are getting any love or joy out of this, to please pay it forward and go to worlds-elsewhere.com to receive the linked ActBlue account for bail funds around the US in order to help. Uh, we will have an incentive for the three most, uh, <laughs> the three largest donations. Uh, so please get those in before act four if you want a special shout out. If your name is different from the name on the receipt, please include that in the email that you send. Also at worlds-elsewhere.com, you can find uh, the program to learn about all of these wonderful performers. Uh, and I would just like to thank people who've already donated in this past act. That includes Jacob Berman, uh, Miko <laughs> Vekitos, all right, Matt Child, Chris M, Jonathan Hegner, Callum Layton, Jin Ling Zhu, Noam Bard, Rebecca Moss, Steve Korski, Sophia Lindstrom, Burning Tarminkin. I am so sorry if I've mispronounced anyone's name. Uh, and uh, with that said, on the subject of Sperries and Spirits, here is James McConaughey uh, with The Internet is Haunted. Facebook, at some point in the past few years, started having memories. A fun little place on the side of your page where you could click and see all the things you'd posted and others had posted on your wall that day, however many years ago. It's cute. A way to see what your thoughts you had on that day. I like to look at mine, to see what I and my friends were discussing that day, or just to see my emo posts from my late teens and early 20s. I was, like so many, quite dramatic in those days. Still am. But there's one kind of post that always puts me on the wrong foot. Not the posts I see expressing excitement for something that wound up being bad, or even my increasingly worried posts about the 2016 election, but posts from friends who weren't friends anymore. I, I actually see them quite often, someone with whom I had a very intense friendship and then an equally intense falling out, a rift that is never quite healed, even if we have mutual friends. And it gives me an odd feeling not unlike seeing a dark shape in an ill-lit hallway, and you're not entirely certain for a moment that it's not a woman in a black dress. Now, the word ghost has meant a lot of things to a lot of people, but I think what has made it last is the implication behind it, that some fragment of a person or an idea lingers in a place. And these things linger all over the internet. Fragments of people, of stories, of ideas, and relationships that, due to the nature of the internet, never go away. They just fade into the back of our minds. TV Tropes, for example, has an entire page devoted to orphan stories and an equally long subpage within it devoted to webcomics that have ceased updating. Now, sometimes these comics are abandoned for very mundane reasons. The artist and the writer had a falling out, the story was going nowhere, the fan base was too intense or not intense enough, or the creators decided it wasn't worth the work. But the ones that stick out to me are the ones with no stories comics have just faded away. I was intensely into a webcomic that lasted, last updated in November of 2013, so I, I think it's safe to say it's abandoned, but in theory it could update tomorrow. We'll never know. The creator never told us what happened, never explained, just quietly stopped updating. But the ghost of the story lingers there on that page, not quite dead, but never really alive again, and infused with an intense sense of melancholy. We'll never know how the story was going to end or why the creator abandoned it. And that's at the gentler end of the internet's ghost spectrum. On my Facebook memories, I'll often come across little fragments of romantic relationships, drama, or happiness, or just mundanity. An ex-boyfriend telling me about some plans we had that night, or an ex-girlfriend making some inside jokes. 
and sometimes I come across nastier stuff. The public displays of a relationship in the midst of crumbling. There's one post from an ex-girlfriend that always gets to me. It just says, thanks for sticking with me. Love you. Every year I see it, and every year I have to take a moment to recover because I remember the conversation that led to it. The night before, she was explaining in some detail how no one but her would ever love me, so I shouldn't break up with her. And then when she agreed, she took a knife and she... Places are haunted, traditionally. So that's what I mean when I say the internet is haunted, but it's not the internet that takes these sentence fragments and turns them into ghosts. It's not the internet that makes us feel the hurt long after the bruises have healed and the scars have faded. Those are just the fragments of lives and stories, and it's us who turns them into ghosts of pain and regret. It's us who are haunted. And that's a shame, because a ghost isn't something you can learn anything from. You look at a ghost and you don't know how it lived or what it wanted or even really how it died. All you get is the outline, the shape of something that was real once. As everyone from James Wan to Thomas Pynchon have taught us, even a ghost can still hurt you. Act two, scene one, a wood near Athens. Enter from opposite sides a fairy and puck. How now, spirit, whither wander you? Over hill, over dale, through bush, through briar, over park, over pale, through flood, through fire, I do wander everywhere, swifter than the moon's sphere. And I serve the fairy queen to do her orbs upon the green. The cowslips tall her pensioners be, in their gold coats, spots, you see? Those be rubies, fairy favors. In those freckles live their savors. I must um, go seek some dewdrops here and hang a pearl in every cowslip's ear. Farewell, thou lob of spirits, I'll be gone. Our queen and all our elves come here anon. The king doth keep his revels here tonight. Take heed the queen come not within his sight. For Oberon is passing fell and wrath, because that she, as her attendant, hath a lovely boy, stolen from an Indian king. She never had so sweet a changeling, and jealous Oberon would have the child, tonight of his train, to trace the forest's wild. But she perforce withholds the loved boy, crowns him with flowers, and makes him all her joy. And now, they never meet in grove or green, by fountain clear or spangled starlight sheen, but they do square that all their elves for fear creep into acorn cups and hide them there. Either, <clears throat> either I mistake your shape and making quite, or else you are that shrewd and knavish sprite called Robin Goodfellow. Are not you he that frights the maidens of the villagery, skim milk, and sometimes labor in the kern, and bootless make the breathless housewife churn, and, and, and sometimes make the drink to bear no barm? I, I mislead night wanderers, laughing at their harm. Oh, those that hobgoblin call you and sweet puck, you do their work, and they shall have good luck. Are, are not you he? Thou speakest aright. I am that merry wanderer of the night. I just to Oberon and make him smile when I a fat and bean-fed horse beguile, neighing in likeness of a filly foal. <laughs> and sometimes lurk I in a gossip's bowl in very likeness of a roasted crab. And when she drinks, against her lips I bob, and on her withered dewlap pour the ale. <laughs> The wisest aunt telling the saddest tale, sometime for three foot stool mistaken. Then slip I from her bum, down tumbles she, and Taylor cries and falls into a cock, and all the whole choir hold their hips and laugh, and waxen in their mirth and knees, and swear <laughs> oh, a merrier hour was never wasted there. 
A room fairy. Here comes Oberon. And here my mistress. Would that he were gone. Enter from one side Oberon with his train, from the other Titania with hers. Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. What, jealous Oberon? Fairy, skip hence. I have forsworn his bed and company. Terry, rash wanton, am I not thy lord? Oh, then I must be thy lady. <laughs> but I know when thou hast stolen away from fairyland and in the shape of... Corin sat all day, playing on pipes of corn and versing love to amorous Philida. Why art thou here, come from the farthest step of India, but that forsooth the bouncing Amazon, your <laughs> buskin mistress and your warrior love to Theseus must be wedded, and you come to give their bed joy and prosperity. How canst thou thus for shame, Titania, glance at my credit with Hippolyta, knowing I know thy love to Theseus? Didst thou not lead him through the glimmering night from Perigenia, whom he ravished, and make him with fair Aegle break his faith with Ariadne and Antiopa? These are the forgeries of jealousy. And never since the middle summer spring met we on hill, in dale, forest, or mead, by paved fountain or by rushy brook, or in the beached margin of the sea to dance our ringlets to the whistling wind. But th with thy brawls, thou hast disturbed our sport. Therefore the winds piping to us in vain, as in revenge have sucked up from the sea contagious fogs, which falling on the land have every pelting river made so proud that they have overborne their continents. The ox hath therefore stretched his yoke in vain. The plowman lost his sweat, and the green corn hath rotted ere his youth attained a beard. The fold stands empty in the drowned field, and the crows are fatted with the Murian flock. The nine men's morris is filled up with mud, and the quaint mazes in the wanton green, for lack of tread, are undistinguishable. <laughs> the human mortals want their winter here. No. Night is now, with him or Carol blessed. Therefore the moon governess of floods, pale in her anger, washes all the air that rheumatic diseases do abound. In thorough this distemperature, we see the seasons alter. Hoary-headed frosts fall in the fresh lap of the crimson rose, and on old Heim's thin and icy crown, an odorous chaplet of sweet summer buds is as a mockery set. The spring, summer, the Childing autumn, angry winter change their wanted liveries, and the mazed world by their increase knows not which is which. And this same progeny of evils comes from our degree, from our dissension. We are their parents and original. Well, do you amend it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairyland buys not the child of me. His mother was a votress of my order. And in the spiced Indian air by night, full often hath she gossiped by my side and sat with me on Neptune's yellow sands, marking the embarked traders on the flood. When we have laughed to see the sails conceive and grow big-bellied with the wanton wind, which she, with pretty and with swimming gait, following her womb then rich with my young squire, would imitate and sail upon the land to fetch me trifles and return again, as from a voyage rich with merchandise. But she, being mortal of that boy, did die. And for her sake do I rear up the boy, and for her sake, I will not part with him. Oh. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus' wedding day. If you will patiently dance in our round and see our moonlight revels, go with us. If not, shun me and I will spare your haunts. Give me that boy and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies away. We shall chide downright if I longer stay. Exit Titania with her train. 
Well, go thy way! Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle Puck, come hither. Thou rememberest since once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid on a dolphin's back uttering such dulcet and harmonious breath that the rude sea grew civil at her song and certain stars shot madly from their spheres to hear the sea maid's music? I remember. That very time I saw, but thou couldst not, flying between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid, all armed. A certain aim he took at a fair vestal throned by the west and loosened his love shaft smartly from his bow, as it should pierce a hundred thousand hearts. But I might see young Cupid's fiery shaft quenched in the chaste beams of the watery moon, and the imperial votaress passed on in, medi in maiden meditation fancy free. Yet marked I where the bolt of Cupid fell. It fell upon a little western flower, before milk white, now purple, with love's wound, and maidens call it love in idleness. Fetch me that flower, the herb I shewed thee once. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids m laid will make man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb, and be thou here again, ere the leviathan can swim a league. I'll put a girdle round about the earth in forty minutes. Exit Puck. Having once this juice. I'll watch Titania when she is asleep and drop the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing then she waking looks upon, be it on lion, bear, or wolf, or bull, or meddling monkey, or on busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. And ere I take this charm from off her sight, as I can take it with another herb, I'll make her render up her page to me. But who comes here? I am invisible! And I will overhear their conference. Enter Demetrius, Helena following him. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander? And fair Hermia? The one I'll slay, the other slayeth me. Thou told'st me they were stolen unto this wood, and here I am, and woed within this wood because I cannot meet my Hermia. Hence get thee gone and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant, but yet you draw not iron, for my heart is true as steel. Leave you your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow you. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not in plainest truth tell you I do not, nor I cannot, love you? And even for that do I love you the more. I am your spaniel. And then, Demetrius, the more you beat me, I will fawn on you. Use me but as your spaniel, spurn me, strike me, neglect me, lose me, lose me, only give me leave, unworthy as I am, to follow you. What worse of place can I beg your love, and yet a place of high respect with me, to then to be used as your dog? Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I look on thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. You do impeach your modesty too much, to leave the city and commit yourself into the hands of one that loves you not to trust the opportunity of night and the ill counsel of a desert place with the rich worth of your virginity. Your virtue is my privilege, and for that it is not night when I do see your face. Therefore I think I am not in night, nor doth this wood lack worlds of company, for you, in my respect, are all the world. Then how can it be said I am alone when all the world is here to look on me? I'll run from thee, and hide me in the brakes, and lead thee to the mercy of wild beasts. The wildest hath not a heart such as you. Run when you will, the story shall be changed. Apollo flies, and Daphne gives the chase. The dove pursues the griffin, the mild hind makes speed to catch the tiger. Bootless speed when cowardice pursues, and valor flies. I will not say thy questions. Let me go. Or if thou follow me, do not believe, but I shall do thee mischief in the woods. I, in the temple, in the town, in the field, you do me mischief. Fie, Demetrius. Your wrongs do set a scandal upon my sex. We cannot fight for love as men may do. We should be wooed, and we're not made to woo. Exit Demetrius. All right, I'll follow thee. And make a heaven of hell to die upon the hand I love so well. Exit Helena. 
Fare thee well, sweet nymph. Ere he do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, and he shall seek thy love. Re-enter Puck. Ah, hast thou the flower there? Welcome, wanderer. Aye, there it is. I pray thee, give it me. I know a bank where the wild thyme crows, where oxlips and the nodding violet grows, quite over canopied with luscious woodbine, with sweet musk roses and with eglantine. There sleeps Titania some time of the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delight. And there the snake throws her enameled skin, weed wide enough to wrap a fairy in. And with the juice of this, I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it, and seek through this grove a sweet Athenian lady in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath off. Effect it with some care, that he may prove more fond on her than she upon her love. And look thou meet me ere the first cock crow. Fear not, my lord. Your servant shall do so. Exunt Omnis. Scene two. Another part of the wood. Enter Titania with her train. Come now, a roundel and a fairy song. Then for the third part of a minute, hence. Some to kill cankers in the musk rose buds. Some war with rare mice for their leathern wings to make my small elves coats. And some keep back the clamorous owl that nightly hoots and wonders at our quaint spirits. See me now asleep. Then to your offices and let me rest. You spotted snakes, the double tongue, thorny hedgehogs be not seen. Newts and blind worms do no wrong. Come not near our fairy queen. Fill a bell with melody, she lullaby, lullaby, lullaby. Never harm, nor spell, nor charm, come my lovely lady, nice, so good night with lullaby. La-la-la-la-la-la-bye. Weaving spiders come not here, hence you long-legged spinners hands. Beetles black approach not near, worm nor snail do no offense. Fill a mare with melody, singing our sweet lullaby. la 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 Away, now all is well. One aloof stand sentinel. Eggs and fairies, Titania sleeps. Enter Oberon and squeezes the flower on Titania's eyelids. What thou seest when thou dost wake, do it for thy true love take. Love and languish for his sake, be it ounce or cat or bear, pard or boar with bristle hair in thy eye that shall appear when thou wakest. It is thy dear. Wake when some vile thing is near. Exit Oberon and her Lysander and Hermia. Fair love, are you faint with wandering in the wood? And to speak truth, I have forgot our way. Uh, we'll rest us, Hermia, if you think it good, and tarry for the comfort of the day. Be it so, Lysander. Find you out a bed, for I upon this bank will rest my head. Well, one turf shall serve as pillow for us both. Uh, one heart, one bed, uh, two bosoms, and one trough. Nay, good Lysander, for my sake, my dear, lie further off yet. Do not lie so near. Oh, uh, take the sense, sweet, uh, of my innocence. Uh, love takes the meaning in love's conference. I mean that my heart unto yours is knit, uh, so that but one heart we can make of it. Uh, two bosoms interchanged with an oath, so then two bosoms and a single troth. Uh, then by your side no bedroom need deny, uh, for lying so, fair Hermia, I do not lie. 
Lysander riddles very prettily. Now, much beshrew my manners and my pride, if Hermia meant to say Lysander lied. But, gentle friend, for love and courtesy, lie further off in human modesty. Such separation, as may well be said, becomes a virtuous bachelor and a maid. So far be distant! And good night, sweet friend. Thy love ne'er alter till thy sweet life end. Amen. Amen to that fair prayer, say I. And then end life when I end loyalty. Here is my bed. Sleep give thee all his rest. <laughs> With half that wish, the wisher's eyes be pressed. They sleep. Enter Puck. Through the forest have I gone. But Athenian found I none on whose eyes I might approve this flower's force in stirring love. Night and silence, who is here? Weeds of Athens he doth wear. This is he, my master said, despised the Athenian maid. And here the maiden, sleeping sound on the dank and dirty ground. Pretty soul, she durst not lie near this lack love, this kill courtesy. Churl, upon thy eyes I throw all the power this charm doth owe. When thy wakes, let love forbid sleep his seat on thy eyelid. And so, awake when I am gone, for I must now to Oberon. Exit Puck. Enter Demetrius and Helena running. <laughs> Stay, though thou kill me, sweet Demetrius. I charge thee hence, and do not haunt me thus. Oh, wilt thou leave me alone in the dark? Do not so. Stay on thy peril. I alone will go. Exit Demetrius. Oh, I am out of breath in this fond chase. The more my prayer, the lesser is my grace. Happy is Hermia, wheresoe'er she lies, for she hath blessed and attractive eyes. Now, how came her eyes so bright? Not with salt tears. If so, my eyes are oftener washed than hers. No, no, I am as ugly as a bear. For beasts that meet me run away for fear. Therefore, no marvel, though Demetrius do, as monster fly my presence thus. What wicked and dissembling glass of mine made me compare with Hermia's sphery eye? But who is here? Uh, Lysander? On the ground? Dead or asleep? Oh, I see no blood. No wound. Lysander, if you live, good sir, awake. Yo, and run through fire will I for thy sweet sake. A oh, transparent Helena nature shows art that through thy bosom makes me see thy heart. Where is Demetrius? Oh, how fit a word is that vile name to perish on my sword. Oh, say not so. Do not say so, Lysander. Say not so. What though he love your Hermia? <sighs> Lord, what though? Uh, yet Hermia still loves you. Then be content. <laughs> content? With Hermia? No, I do repent the tedious minutes I with her have spent. Uh, not Hermia, but Helena I love, who will not change a pigeon for a dove. The, the will of man is by his reason swayed. And reason says, you are the worthier maid. Uh, things growing are not ripe until their season. So I being young, till now ripe not to reason. And touching now the point of human skill, reason becomes martial to my will and leads me to your eyes. Oh, where I o'erlook love's stories written in love's richest book. Wherefore was I to this keen mockery born? When at your hands did I deserve this scorn? It's not enough, it's not enough, young man, that I did never, nor no, never can, deserve a sweet look from Demetrius' eye, but you must flout my insufficiency. Good truth, you do me wrong. Good sooth, you do, in such disdainful manner, me to woo. But, but fare you well. Perforce, I must confess, I thought you, Lord, of more true gentleness. Oh, that a lady of one man refuse should of another therefore be so abused. Exit Helena. She sees not Hermia. Hermia, sleep thou there, and never mayest thou come Lysander near. 
For as a surfeit of the sweetest things, the deepest loathing to the stomach brings, or as the heresies that men do leave are hated most of those they did deceive, so thou, my surfeit and my heresy, of all be hated but the most of me. And all my powers address your love and might to honor Helen and to be her knight. Exit Lysander. Help me, Lysander. Help me. Do thy best to pluck this crawling serpent from my breast. Oh, me for pity. Oh, what a dream was here. Lysander, look how I do quake with fear. Methought a serpent at my heart away, and you sat smiling at his cruel prey. Lysander! What? Removed? Lysander! Lord! What? Out of hearing? Gone? No sound? No word? Alack, where are you? Speak, and if you hear, speak of our loves, I swoon almost with fear! No? Then I well perceive you are not nigh. Either death or you I'll find immediately. Exit Hermia. I, hi, <laughs> I'm just so overwhelmed. I hope you are too. And I hope you will consider uh, opening up your wallet and uh, giving to these uh, the community bail funds that we're all working so hard to raise money for. So many of you already have, and I'm just about to thank you. But uh, if you haven't yet, go to world-elsewhere.com. You can find the community bail link there and instructions. You can also find the program. There will also be a video that will come out later thanking all of our donors. And if you can't, for whatever reason, donate during the stream, you have through the end of set Sunday to do so. So please, uh, thank you. But uh, for the people who already have, uh, I just want to thank Sharon Horwatz, Sierra, Bit Up North, Max Fagan, Rob Jurgen Dukes, Ross Razanwelski, Cameron Joshua, Stephen Grimes, Ben Fatim, Kit Bloodgood, Robert Stark, Piper Rice, Puck Spear, Jackie Zhang, Holly Bat Staten, Booze Buddy Net Ramos, Ben, Terry, Samuel Del Coral, Michael Calgren, Saropod Fancier, Liz, Fess Lawson, Lauren Williams, Chris Emery, Lizzie Stodder. Uh, thank you all so much, and please consider joining them. You have through Act 4 that if you're one of the top three donors, you will get a special surprise, and we really want you to partake. But for now, our next performer is Catherine Ross Rose Turbs, who will be singing the song Ophelia by Sebastian Blake Stout. One day you're all about me, you love me, you'll never leave, I'm your everything. Next day though, you change your mind, you've moved on, I'm left behind, we had nothing. Why don't you say what you think? Are you my prince, my friend? You will drive me crazy. You will be my end. It's okay, I'll get over it. Just let the water carry me away from you. It's okay, I can deal with it. Just let the water carry me away from all the things you do to me. You're messing with my mind and then you come tell me I always loved you really. Ophelia, you're keeping so much from me. I don't know what it could be. Am I losing my mind? I keep on 
being let down, Prince Charming. Where is your crown if you'd be so kind? Why don't you tell me the truth? My mind is starting to bend. You will drive me crazy. You will be my end. It's okay. I'll get over it. Just let the water carry me away from you. It's okay. I can deal with it. Just let the water carry me away from all the things you do to me. You're messing with my mind and then you come tell me. I always loved you really. Ophelia. Ophelia. Ophelia, you're keeping so much from me. I'm walking the edge of the knife. Is there no one that I can trust in this life? I'm losing everything. If you are leaving now, I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, I'll get over it, just let the water carry me away from you, it's okay, I can deal with it, just let the water carry me away from all the things you do to me, you're messing with my mind and then you come tell me, I always loved you really, Ophelia, it's okay, I'll get over it, just let the water carry me away from you, it's okay, I can deal with it, just let the water carry me away from all the things you do to me, you're messing with my mind, and then you come tell me, I always loved you, really, Ophelia, 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 Ophelia. Act three, scene one, the wood. Titania lying asleep. Enter Quince, Snug, Bottom, Flute, Snout, and Starbling. Are we all met? Pat, Pat, and here is a marvelous place for a rehearsal. This green plot shall be our stage. This Hawthorne break, our tiring house, and we will do it in action as we will do it before the Duke. Uh, Peter Quince. What sayest thou, Bully Bottom? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that will never please. But first, uh, Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. How answer you that? I don't like it. It's a parlous to spare. I think we must leave the killing out when all is done. Uh, not a whit. I have a device to make all well. Write me a prologue. And let the prologue seem to say, we will do no harm with our swords, and that Pyramus is not killed indeed, and for the more better assurance, tell them that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Bottom the Weaver. This will put them out of fear. Well, we will have such a prologue, and it shall be written in eight and six. Uh, no, make it two more. Let it be written in eight and eight. Will not the ladies be afeard of the lion? I fear it, I promise you. Masters, you ought to consider with yourselves to bring in, God shield us, a lion among ladies is a most dreadful thing, for there is not a more fearful wildfowl than your lion living, and we ought to look to it. Therefore, another prologue must say he is not a lion. Nay, 
you must name his name. And half his face must be seen through the lion's neck. And, and, and he himself must speak through, saying thus or to the same defect. Uh, Leitner or fair ladies, I, I would wish you or I would request you or I would entreat you uh, not to fear, not to tremble. My life for yours. If you think I come hither as a lion, it were pity of my life. No, I am no such thing. I am a man as other men are. And there indeed, let him name his name and tell them plainly that he is Snug the Joiner. Well, it shall be so. But there is two hard things. That is, to bring moonlight into a chamber. For you know, Pyramus and Thesby meet by moonlight. Does the moon shine the night we play our play? A calendar! A calendar! Look in the almanac! Find out moonshine! Find out moonshine! Uh, yes! It doth shine that night. Why, then, you may leave a casement of the great wi chamber window, where we play, open, and the moon may shine in at the casement. Aye. Or else one must come in with a bush of thorns and a lantern and say he comes to disfigure or to present... <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, there's another thing. We must have a wall in the great chamber. Uh, Pyramus and Thespi says the story did talk through the chink of a wall. <laughs> you can never bring in a wall! What say you, Bottom? Some man or other must present wall. And let him have some plaster or some loam or some rough cast about him to signify wall and let him hold his fingers thus. And through that cranny shall Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. If that may be, then all is well. Come, sit down, every mother's son, and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you begin. When you have spoken your speech, enter into that break, and so every one according to his cue. Enter Puck behind. What hemp and homespuns have we swaggering here? So near the cradle of the fairy queen. What, a play toward? I'll be an auditor, an actor too, perhaps, if I see cause. Speak, Pyramus, Thisbe, stand forth. Thisbe, the flowers of odious savors sweet. Odors, odors. Odors, savors sweet. So hath thy breath, my dearest Thisbe dear. But hark, a voice! Stay thou but there a while, and by and by I will to thee appear. A stranger pyramus than e'er played here. Exit Puck. Must I speak now? Aye, marry, must you? For you must understand he goes but to see a noise that he has heard and is to come again. Most radiant Pyramus, most lily white of hue, of colour like the red rose on triumphant briar, most brisky juvenile and eke, most lovely jowl, as true as truest horse that yet would never tire. I'll meet thee, Pyramus, at Ninny's tomb. Ninus tomb, man. What, you must not speak that yet, that you answer to Pyramus. You speak. All your part at once, cues and all pyramids enter. Your cue is passed. It is never tire. Oh. <clears throat> as true as true as horse, that yet would never tire. Re enter Puck and Bottom with an ass's head. If I with fair, fair Thisbe, I were only thine. Oh, oh my god. Monsters. Oh, oh no. strange. Oh, we are haunted. Ray, Master, Ray, Master. <laughs> Eggs in quince, snug, flute, snout, and starveling. I'll follow you. I'll lead you about around. Through bog, through bush, through brake, through briar. Sometime a horse I'll be, sometime a hound, a hog, a headless bear, sometime a fire. And neigh, and bark, and grunt, and roar, and burn. Like horse, hound, hog, bear, fire at every turn. Exit Puck. Why do they run away? 
This is a knavery of them to make me afeard. Re-enter Snout. Oh, bottom, thou art changed. What do I see on thee? What do you see? You, you see an ass head of your own, do you? Exit Snout. Re-enter Quince. Oh, bless thee, bottom, bless thee, that thou art translated. <laughs> Exit Quince. I see their knavery. <gasps> this is to make an ass of me. To fright me if they could. But I will not stir from this place. Do what they can. I will walk up and down here. And I will sing that they shall hear. I am not afraid. <clears throat> the also cock so black of you. With orange tawny bill, the throstle with his note so true, the rend on little quill. What angel awakes me from my flowery bed? The finch, the sparrow, and the lark, the plate song cuckoo gray. Whose note for many a man doth mark, and dares not answer nay. For Indian who would set his wit to so foolish a bird, who would give the bird the lie, though he cry cuckoo never saw. I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. Mine ear is much enamored of thy note, so is mine eye enthralled to thy shape. And thy fair virtue's force perforce doth move me on the first view to say, to swear, I love thee. Methinks, mistress, you should have little reason for that. <laughs> and yet, to say the truth, Reason and love keep little company together nowadays. The more the pity that some honest neighbors will not make them friends. <laughs> Nay, I could gleek upon occasion. Oh, thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. Not so, neither. But if I had wit enough to get out of this wood, I have enough to serve out mine own turn. Out of this wood do not desire to go. Thou shalt, thou shalt remain here, whether thou wilt or no. <laughs> I am a spirit of no common rate. The summer still doth tend upon my state, and I do love thee. Therefore, go with me. I'll give thee fairies to attend on thee, and they shall fetch thee jewels from the deep, and sing while thou on pressed flowers dost sleep. And I will purge thy mortal grossness so that thou shalt like an airy spirit go. <laughs> Peas blossom, cobweb, moth, mustard seed. Enter Peace Blossom, Cobweb, Moth, and Mustard Seed. And I. And I. And I. Where shall we go? Be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Hop in his walks and gamble in his eyes. Feed him with apricots and dewberries, with purple grapes, green figs, and mulberries. The honey bags steal from the humble bees, and for night tapers, crop their waxen thighs and light them at the fiery glowworm's eyes to have my love to bed and to arise. And pluck the wings from painted butterflies to fan the moonbeams from his sleeping eyes. Nod to him, elves, do him courtesies. Hail, mortal. Hail. Hail? Hail. Hey, I cry your worship's mercy heartily. Uh, I beseech your worship's name. Cobweb. I shall desire a you of more acquaintance, good master Cobweb. If I cut my finger, I shall make bold with you. Your name, honest gentleman. Peace Blossom. I pray you, commend me to Mistress Squash, your mother, and to Master Peas Cod, your father. Good master Peas Blossom, I shall desire of you more acquaintance too. Uh, your name, I beseech you, sir. Mustard seed. Good master mustard seed. I know your patience well. That same cowardly giant like Oxbeath have devoured many a gentleman of your house. I promise you, your kindred hath made my eyes water ere now. I desire your more acquaintance, good master mustard seed. <laughs> Come wait upon him.
him, lead him to my bower. The moon methinks looks with a watery eye, and when she weeps, weeps every little flower, lamenting some enforced chastity. Tie up my love's tongue and bring him silently. Exent omnis. Scene two, another part of the wood. Enter Oberon. I wonder if Titania be awaked. <laughs> then, what it was that next came in her eye, which she must dote on in extremity. Enter Puck. Oh, here comes my messenger. How now, mad spirit? What knight rule now about this haunted grove? My mistress with a monster is in love. <laughs> Near to her close and consecrated bower, while she was in her dull and sleeping hour, a crew of patches, rude mechanicals that work for bread upon Athenian stalls, were met together to rehearse a play intended for a great Theseus nuptial day. The shallowest thick skin of that barren sort who Pyramus presented in their sport forsook his scene and entered in a break when I did him at this advantage take an ass's knoll. I fix it on his head. Anon, his thisbe must be answered. And forth my mimic comes. When him they spy, as wild geese that the creeping fowler eye, or russet-pated choffs, many in sort, rising and cawing at the gun's report, sever themselves and madly sweep the sky. So, at his sight, away his fellows fly. And at our stamp, here, o'er and o'er one falls. He murder cries, and help from Athens calls. <laughs> their sense, thus weak, lost with their fears thus strong, made senseless things begin to do them wrong. For briars and thorns at their apparel snatch, some sleeves, some hats, from yielders all things catch. I led them on in this distracted fear, and left sweet Pyramus translated there when in that moment so it came to pass Titania waked and straightway loved an ass this falls out better than I could devise <laughs> But hast thou yet latched the Athenian's eyes with the love juice, as I did bid thee do? I took him sleeping, that is finished too, and the Athenian woman by his side, that when he waked, of course, she must be eyed. Enter Hermia and Demetrius. Stand close, this is the same Athenian. This is the woman, but not this the man. Oh, why rebuke you him that loves you so? Lay breath so bitter on your bitter foe. Now I but chide, but I should use thee worse, for thou, I fear, hast given me cause to curse. If thou hast slain Lysander in his sleep, being or shoes in blood, plunge in the deep and kill me too. <gasps> the sun was not so true unto the day as he to me. Would he have stolen away from sleeping Hermia? I'll believe as soon this whole earth may be bored, and that the moon may through the center creep and so displease her brother's noontide with antipodes. It cannot be, but thou hast murdered him. So should a murderer look so dead, so grim. So should the murdered look, and so should I, pierce through the heart with your stern cruelty. Yet you, the murderer, look as bright, as clear as yonder Venus in her glimmering sphere. What's this to my Lysander? Where is he? Ah, uh, good Demetrius, wilt thou give him me? I'd rather give his carcass to my hounds. Thou dog, out cur! Thou drivest me past the bounds of maiden's patience. Hast thou slain him then? Henceforth never be numbered among men. Oh, once tell true, tell true, even for my sake. Durst thou have looked upon him being awake, and hast thou killed him sleeping? Oh, brave touch! Could not a worm, an adder, do so much? Huh, an adder did it, for with doubler tongue than thine, thou serpent, never adder stung. You spend your passion on a misprized mood. I am not guilty of Lysander's blood, nor is he dead for all that I can tell. I pray thee, tell me then that he is well. And if I could, what should I get there for? A 
privilege never to see me more. And from my hated presence part I so, see me no more, whether he be dead or no. Exit Hermia. Uh, there is no following her in this fierce vein. Here, therefore, for a while I will remain. So sorrow's heaviness doth heavier grow, but debt that bankrupt sleep doth sorrow owe. But no, in some slight measure it will pay. If for his tender, here, I will make some stay. Lies down and sleeps. What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite, and, and laid the love juice on some true love's sight. Of thy misprison must perforce ensue some true love turned, and not a false turned true. Then fate or rules that, one man holding troth, a million fail, confounding oath on oath. About the wood, go swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens, look thou find, all fancy sick she is, and pale of cheer, with sighs of love that costs the fresh blood dear. By some illusion, see thou bring her here. I'll charm his eyes against she do appear. I go, I go, look how I go, swifter than arrow from the Tartar's bow. Exit Puck. Flower of this purple dye hit with Cupid's archery, sink in the apple of his eye when his love he doth espy. Let her shine as gloriously as the Venus of the sky. When thou wakest, if she be by, beg of her for remedy. Re-enter Puck. Captain of our fairy band, Helena is here at hand, and the youth mistook by me pleading for a lover's fee. Shall we there fond pageant see? Lord, what fools these mortals be! Stand aside. The noise they make will cause Demetrius to awake. Then we'll two at once woo one. That must needs be sport alone, and those things do best please me that befall preposterously. Enter Lysander and Helena. Why should you think that I should woo in scorn? I scorn and derision never come in tears. Look, when I vow, I weep. When vows so born in their nativity, all truth appears. How can these things in me seem scorn to you, bearing the badge of faith to prove them true? You do advance your cunning more and more. When truth kills truth, oh devilish holy fray, these vows are Hermia's. Will you give her ore? Wait oath with oath and you will nothing weigh. Your vows to her and me put in two scales and they will even weigh, both as light as tails. I had no judgment when to her I swore. Nor none in my mind now you give her ore. D D Demetrius loves her and, and he loves not you. Oh, Helen, goddess, nymph, perfect, divine. To what, my love, shall I compare thine eye? Crystal is muddy. Oh, how ripe and show thy lips those kissing cherries tempting grow. Oh, spite, oh, hell! I see you all are bent to set against me for your merriment. If you were civil and knew courtesy, you would not do me thus much injury. Can you not? Hate me as I know you do, but you must join in souls to mock me too. If you were men, as men you are in show, you would not use a gentle lady so. To vow and swear and super praise my hearts. When I am sure you hate me with all your hearts. You both are rivals and love Hermia. And now both are rivals to mock Helena. A trim exploit, a manly enterprise to conjure tears up in a poor maid's eyes. With your derision, none of noble sort would so offend a virgin and extort a poor soul's patience, all to make your sport. Oh, but you are unkind, Demetrius, be not so. For you love Hermia, oh, this you know I know. And here, well, with all goodwill, with all my heart, in Hermia's love I yield you up my part, and yours of Helena to me bequeath, whom I do love and will do to my death. Never did mockers waste more idle breath. Alexander, keep thy Hermia, I will none. If e'er I loved her, all that love is gone. My heart to her but as guestwise sojourned, and now to Helena is at home returned, there to remain. Helena, it is not so. Disparage not the faith thou dost not know, lest to thy peril thou art by it dear. Oh, look, where thy love comes, yonder is thy dear. 
Re-enter Hermia. Dark night that from the eye his function takes, the ear more quick of apprehension makes. Wherein it doth impair the seeing sense, it pays the hearing double recompense. Thou art not by mine eye, Lysander found, mine ear, I thank it brought me to thy sound. But why unkindly didst thou leave me so? Why should he stay, whom love doth press to go? What love could press Lysander from my side? Lysander's love that would not let him bide. Fair Helena, who more engills the night than all you fiery O's and eyes of light. Why seek'st thou me? Could not this make thee know? The hate I bear thee made me leave thee so. You speak not as you think. It cannot be. Lo, she is one of this confederacy. Now I perceive they have conjoined all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me. Injurious Hermia, most ungrateful maid, have you conspired? Have you with these contrived to bait me with this foul derision? Is all the counsel that we two have shared, the sisters' vows, the hours that we have spent, when we have chid the had tasty-footed time for parting us, oh, it's all forgot. All school days friendship, childhood innocence, we, Hermia, like two artificial gods, have with our needles created both one flower, war both on one sampler, sitting on one cushion, both warbling of one song, both in one key, as if our hands, our sides, voices, and minds had been incorporate. So we grew together, like a double cherry, seeming parted and yet in union in our partition. Two lovely berries molded on one stem. So with two seeming bodies, but one heart, two of the first, like Colts and heraldry, do but to one and crowned with one crest. And will you rent our ancient love asunder to join with men in scorning your poor friend? It is not friendly. It is not maidenly. Our sex as well as I may chide you for it, though I alone do feel the injury. I am amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not. It seems that you scorn me. Have you not set Lysander, as in scorn, to follow me and praise my eyes and face? And have you made your other love, Demetrius, who even but now did spurn me with its foot to call me goddess, nymph, divine, rare, precious, celestial? Wherefore speaks he this to her he hates? Wherefore doth Lysander... Deny your love so rich within his soul, and tender me, forsooth, affection, but by your setting on, by your consent. What though I not be so in grace as you, so hung upon with love, so fortunate, but miserable most to love unloved. This you should pity rather than despise. I understand not what you mean by this. I do persever, counterfeit sad looks, make mouths upon me when I turn my back, wink at each other, hold the sweet jest up. This sport well carried shall be chronicled. If you have any pity, grace, or manners, you would not make me such an argument. But fare you well, it is partly my own fault, with death or absence shall soon remedy. A stay, gentle Helena, hear my excuse, my, my love, my life, my, my soul, fair Helena. Ah, excellent. Sweet, do not scorn her so. If she cannot entreat, I can compel. No, thou canst compel, no more than she entreat. Thy threats have no more strength than her weak prayers. Helen, I love thee, by my life, I do. I swear by that which I will lose for thee, to prove him false that says I love thee not. I say I love thee more than he can do. Don't thou say so, withdraw, and prove it too. Oh, quick, come! Lysander, where to tends all this? Away, you wretch! Oh, no, no, he'll seem to break loose. Take on as you would follow, but yet come not. You are a tame man, go. Hang off, thou cat, thou burr. Vile thing, let loose, or I will shake thee from me like a serpent. Why are you grown so rude? What change is this, sweet love? I love. Out, this artless bugbear, out, out, loathed, medicine, hated, potion, hence. Do you not jest? Yes, sooth, and so do you. Demetrius, I will keep my word with thee. Well, I would I had your bond, for I perceive a weak bond holds you. I'll not trust your word. What? Should I strike her, hurt her, kill her dead? Although I hate her, I'll not harm her so. What? Can you do me greater harm than hate? Hate me! Wherefore, oh me, 
What news, my love? Am I not Hermia? Are not you Lysander? I am as fair now as I was erewhile. Since night you loved me, yet since night you left me. Why then you left me? Oh, the gods forbid, in earnest shall I say. I, by my life, and never did desire to see thee more. Therefore be out of hope, of question, of doubt. But be certain, nothing truer. Tis no jest that I do hate thee and love Helena. Oh, me, you juggler, you canker blossom, you thief of love. What have you come by night and stolen my love's heart from him? Fine, I faith. Have you no modesty, no maiden shame, no touch of bashfulness? What will you tear oh. impatient answers from my gentle tongue? Fie, fie, you counterfeit, you puppet, you. Oh, puppet, why so? Ay, that way goes the game. Now I perceive that she hath made compare between our statures. She hath urged her height and for her personage, her tall personage, her height forsooth, she hath prevailed with him. And are you grown so high in his esteem because I am so tiny and so low? How low am I, thou painted maypole? Speak, how low am I? I am not yet so low, but that my nails can reach unto thine eyes. I pray you, though you mock me, gentle, and let her not hurt me. I was never cursed. I have no gift at all in truism. My right, I am a right maid from all my cowardice. Let her not strike me. You perhaps may think because she is something lower than myself, I can <sighs> Lower, hark again. Good Hermia, be not so bitter with me. I ever whore did love you, Hermia. Did ever keep your counsels, never wronged you. Save that in love unto Demetrius, I told him of your stealth unto this wood. He followed you, uh, for love I followed him. But he hath chid me, hence. Threatened and threatened me, threatened to strike me, to spurn me, nay, to kill me too. And, and now, so you will let me quiet go to Athens, will I bear my folly back and follow you no further. Let me go. You see how simple and how fond I am. Why, get you gone, who is that hinders you? A foolish heart that I leave here behind. What, with Lysander? With Demetrius. No, no, sir, be not afraid. Uh, she shall not harm thee, Helena. Oh. Ah, no, sir, she shall not, but you take her part. Oh, when she's angry, she's keen and shrewd. She was a vixen when she went to school, and though she be but little, she is fierce. Little again, nothing but low and little. Why will you suffer her to flout me thus? Let me come to her. Right, get you gone, you garden gnome, you minimus of hindering not grass maid, you bead, you acorn. You are too officious in her behalf and scorns your services. Let her alone. Speak not of Helena, take not her part, for if thou dost intend never so show of little love to her, thou shalt her by it. Now she holds me not. Now follow, if thou darest, to try whose right of thine or mine is most in Helena. Follow? Nay, I'll go with thee, cheek by jowl. Excellent Lysander and Demetrius. You, mistress, all this coil is long of you. Nay, go not back. I will not trust you, I. More longer say in your cursed company, your hands then mine are quicker for the fray, but my legs are longer. To run away? Exit Helena. I am amazed and know not what to say. Exit Hermia. This is thy negligence. Still, thou mistaketh, or else commit'st thy knaveries willfully. Believe me, King of Shadows, I mistook. Did you not tell me I should know the man by the Athenian garment he had on? And so far blameless proves my enterprise that I have anointed an Athenian's eyes. And so far am I glad it did so sort as this their jangling I esteem a sport. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thou seest these lovers seek a place to fight? He, therefore, Robin, overcast the night, the starry welkin that cover thou anon with drooping fog as black as Acheron. And lead these testy rivals so astray that one come not within another's way, like 
to Lysander, sometime frame thy tongue, then stir Demetrius up with bitter wrong, and sometime rail thou like Demetrius, and from each other look thou lead them thus, till o'er their brows death counterfeiting sleep, with laden legs and batty wings doth creep. Then crush this herb into Lysander's eye, whose liquor hath this virtuous property to take from thence all error with his might, and make his eyeballs roll with wanted sight. When they next wake, all this derision shall seem a dream and fruitless vision, and back to Athens shall the lovers wend with league whose date till death shall never end. Whiles I in this affair do thee employ, I'll to my queen and beg her Indian boy. And then I will her charmed eye release from monster's view, and all things shall be peace. My fairy lord, this must be done with haste. For night's swift dragons cut the clouds full fast, and yonder shines Aurora's harbinger. At whose approach ghosts, wandering here and there, troop home to churchyards, damned spirits all, that in crossways and floods have burial, all ready to their wormy beds have gone for fear lest they should look their shames upon. They willfully themselves exile from light, and must for eye consort with black-browed night. But we are spirits of another sort. I, with the morning's love, have oft made sport, and like a forester the groves may tread even till the eastern gate, all fiery red opening on Neptune with fair blessed beams, turns into yellow gold his salt grass streams. But notwithstanding, haste, make no delay. We may effect this business yet ere day. Exit Oberon. <laughs> up and down, up and down, I will lead them up and down. I am feared in field and town. Goblin, lead them up and down. Here comes one. Re-enter Lysander. Where art thou, proud Demetrius? Speak thou now! Here, villain, drawn and ready, where art thou? I will be with thee straight. Follow me, then, to plainer ground. Exit Lysander, as following the voice. Re-enter Demetrius. Lysander, speak again. Thou run away, thou coward, art thou fled? In some bush? Where dost thou hide thy head? Thou coward, art thou bragging to the stars, telling the bushes that thou look'st for wars and wilt not come? Come, recreant, come, thou child. I'll whip thee with a rod. He is defiled that lays a sword on thee. Yea, art thou there? Follow my voice. We'll try no manhood here. Exit Demetrius and Puck. Re-enter Lysander. He goes before me, and still dares me on. When I come where he calls, then he is gone. The villain is much lighter keeled than I. I followed fast, but faster did he fly. That I am fallen in a dark, uneven way. And here will rest me. Lysander lies down. Come, thou gentle day. For if but once thou show me thy gray light, I'll find Demetrius and revenge this spite. Lysander sleeps. We enter Puck and Demetrius. Ho, 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 coward! Why comest thou not? Abide me, if thou darest, for while I wot, thou runnest before me, shifting every place, and darest not stand or look me in the face. Where art thou? Now. Come hither. I am here. Uh, nay, then thou mockest me. Thou shalt buy this deer if ever I thy face by daylight see. Oh, now go thy way. Oh. Fate must constraint of me to measure out my length on this cold bed. By day's approach, look to be visited. Demetrius lies down and sleeps. Re enter Helena. Oh, weary night. Oh, long and tedious night, abate thy hour. Shine thy comforts from the east, that I may back to Athens by daylight, from these that my poor company detest. And sleep, that sometimes shuts up sorrow's eyes, steal me a while from mine own. Helena lies down and sleeps. Yet but three, 
Come one more. Two of both kinds makes up four. Here she comes, cursed and sad. Cupid is a knavish lad, thus to make poor females mad. Re-enter Hermia. Never so weary, never so in woe, but dabbled with the dew and torn with briars. I can no further crawl, no further go. My legs can keep no pace with my desires. Here will I rest me till the break of day. Heaven shield Lysander if they mean a fray. Hermia lies down and sleeps. On the ground, sleep sound. I'll apply to your eye, gentle lover. Remedy. Huck squeezes the juice on Lysander's eyes. When thou wakest, thou takest true delight in the sight of thy former lady's eye, and the country proverb known that every man should take his own in your waking shall be shown. Jack shall have Jill, not shall go ill, the man shall have his mare again, and all shall be well. Huck exits. Sorry, I was just, it's really, it's really great. Uh, so I hope uh, you're all uh, enjoying this, and I hope you recognize that they've done this for us, because they want to raise money for the Community Bail Fund. Uh, so can you uh, go to world-elsewhere.com, and you will find donation instructions. There you will also find a uh, link to a beautiful program with information about all of these wonderful performers so you can learn about them all and follow them. And I just want to remind people that uh, if you donate, uh, there will be a thank you video uh, uh, upcoming. You can donate through Sunday if you can't open up your wallet today. Uh, and the three top donors who uh, donate before uh, the end of Act 4 uh, will get a special shout out. So if you are particularly fortunate and feeling particularly generous, we'd really appreciate it if you get those donations in now. Uh, for now, uh, I'd like to thank the people who've already donated. Uh, sorry, one second. Uh, David, David Dodd. James Keatler's number one poodle in the, his neck, Monochrome, Leslie and Rick Gilman, Amy Peterson, Mendy Benini, uh, Willa Yusuveri, Timberwolf, Sharon Wong, Sarah Fath, Neiman Inspections LLC, Casey Pham, DB Kilowatt, Morgan Chanette, Pietro Gagardia, I'm sorry, Lauren Roberts, Mama Jillian Rose, Vivian Tan. Thank you all so much. Uh, and now, uh, actor Jared Gilman will perform a serious monologue that he wrote completely by himself. And he thinks those are not exactly the most promising words. Uh, but bear with him for five minutes. He's got some stuff he wants to say. So in an attempt, in an attempt to escape my anxious thinking, I walked outside into my backyard, which almost worked uh, until I saw two butterflies. I have a strong fear of butterflies. Uh, so thus I spent the remainder of the outdoor session glued to the screen door of my house. This technically wasn't as bad an experience uh, as the previous time I attempted this same backyard act a few days prior. I made the smart guy move of pulling my phone out a few minutes in and the even smarter guy move of opening up Twitter. Uh, I, like many, watched a very brief homeless man say fuck you one last time before succumbing to the state-enforced army that had just confronted him at the bus stop. He went for his waist. I, I guess they thought he was armed for a split second. I thought he was going to drop his pants and really send a message to his oppressors. But they only know one thing, huh? I have 
no idea why all of them participated. In fact, every time I think I've processed all the abhorrently awful shit are act of trying to process everything especially as someone that grew up migrating from social bubble to social bubble getting hit with doses of reality until one day he might have been struggling to keep up to the point that he was starting to feel way too alone to feel motivated might be a never-ending might be a never-ending sort of thing until shit actually changes and the social safety nets that we as humans that exist deserve are actually implemented and those whose lives have been wronged have actually been righted for good. We're too rich a country to be this shitty to people on this largest scale. I mean, when, is, when in history is tyranny proven to be beneficial in the greater long term? It's just so stupid to me. You see, I can think of all the family members whom I still love that would call this pie in the sky thinking. I hate that I wasn't able to bring it down closer to them before it was too late. Um, sorry. I seem to love starting my days with anxious thinking, and then when I think about calming down, the depressed lump in my throat only becomes more excited. Like, why can't I accept my own personal sadness? Maybe I feel like I, I haven't taken enough personal shit in life to deserve feeling sad? Is that, in and of itself, like, kind of sad in a pathetic way? I don't know, maybe I'm just sad for external reasons at this point. I mean, our country's pretty broken right now. It has been for centuries, but that is also as basic a statement as water is wet. Every good person gets that now. Like, in fact, they definitely got that before me. Like, I, I was probably a, a bit late to that party. Not, not at all. Not at all saying I was ever anywhere close to being a conservative in my life. I'm just saying that I, like too many, definitely said some dumbass shit in the past. And in my opinion, self-deprecation can be an underrated asset, as long as you don't overrate it and destroy your whole self-worth in the process. Although, looking at the news makes me think that the self-worth thing might just be a me problem because again when i open twitter sorry i also see hundreds of thousands of masks covering the faces of people that definitely did not cower to their own personal petty anxieties like me to make a borderline comical understatement i will say relearning my shyness this last week has been interesting uh, honestly, I might have cabin fevered a little bit over a month ago. Um, I'm over that now, though, thankfully. Um, but yeah, isolation can really breed insufferability. I am referring to myself. Uh, <laughs> I actually forgot how to, how to shut up for like a week or two. Nah, more. I'm back to normal now, though, talking-wise, I think, which means I am doing a lot more listening and shutting up, except for right now. Doesn't mean I don't need to head out in my backyard every once in a while to, to decompress with varying results. I just hate that I have a brain that somehow can create almost equally anxious responses to both the external stimuli of watching videos of people being beaten and murdered senselessly, as well as that of two real-life butterflies just minding their own flying business. <laughs> like, seriously, fuck phobias, fuck anxious thinking, and finally to any pro-cop people watching this, somehow, I'm just going to quote a much better person than me. I yield my time. Fuck you. Uh, that was uh, wonderful. Uh, we now leave you for a 10 minute intermission.
one, the wood. Lysander, Demetrius, Helena, Hermia, lying asleep. Enter Titania and Bottom, peas blossom, cobweb, moth, mustard seed, and other fairies attending. Oberon behind, unseen. Come, sit thee down upon this flowery bed, while I thy amiable cheeks do coy, and stick musk roses in thy sleek smooth head, and kiss thy large ears, my gentle joy. Where's Peas Blossom? Ready. Uh, scratch my head, Peas Blossom. Uh, where's Monsieur Cobweb? Ready. Uh, Monsieur Cobweb, Monsieur, get you your weapons in hand and kill me a red hipped humblebee on top of a thistle. And good Monsieur, bring me the honey bag. Do not fret yourself too much on the action, Monsieur. And good Monsieur. Mm -hmm. Have care, the honey bag break not. I would be loath to have you overflown with a honey bag, senor. Uh, where's Monsieur Mustard Seed? Ready. Give me your knee, Monsieur Mustard Seed. Pray you leave your courtesy, good Monsieur. What you will? Nothing, good Monsieur. But to help cavalry cobweb to scratch. <laughs> I must to the barbers, Monsieur, for methinks I am marvelous hairy about the face. And I am such a tender ass. If my hair do but tickle me, I must scratch. <laughs> what, wilt thou hear some music, my sweet love? Oh, I have a reasonable good ear in music. Uh, let's have the tongs and the bones. Or say, sweet love, what thou desirest to eat. Truly. A peck of provender. I could munch your good dry oats. <laughs> Methinks... I have a great desire to a bottle of hay. Good hay, sweet hay, hath no fellow. I have a venturous fairy that shall seek the squirrel's hoard and fetch thee new nuts. Ooh. Uh, I, I, but I'd rather have a handful or two of dried peas. Uh, but I pray you, <laughs> oh, let none of your people stir me. I have an exposition of sleep come upon me. Oh, sleep thou, and I will wind thee in my arms. Fairies be gone, and be all a ways away. Eggs and fairies. So doth the woodbine, the sweet honeysuckle, gently entwist the female ivy, so enrings the barky fingers of the elm. Oh, how I love thee. How I dote on thee. They sleep. Enter Puck. Welcome, good sweet Robin. Seest thou this sweet sight? Hmm. Her dotage now do I begin to pity. For meeting her in, of late behind this wood, seeking sweet favors from this hateful fool, I did upbraid her and fall out with her. For she his hairy temples then had rounded with a coronet of fresh and fragrant flowers. And that same dew which sometime on the buds was wont to swell like round and orient pearls stood now within the pretty floweret's eye like tears that did their own disgrace bewail. When I had at my pleasure taunted her and she in mild terms begged my patience, I then did ask her her changeling child, which straight she gave me and her fairy sent to bear him to my bower in fairyland. And now I have the boy, I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eyes, and gentle Puck, take this transformed scalp from off the head of this Athanian swain, that he, awaking when the other do, must all to Athens back again repair, and think no more of this night's accidents, but as the fierce vexation of a dream. But first I will release the fairy queen. Be as thou wast wont to do, see as thou wast wont to see. Dian's bud or Cupid's flower hath such force and blessed power. Now, my Titania, wake you, my sweet queen. My Oberon, what visions have I seen? Methought I was enamored of an ass. There lies your love. Oh. How came these things to pass? Oh, how mine eyes do loathe his visage now. Silence a while. Robin, take off his head. Titania, 
music call and strike more dead than common sleep of all these five the scents. Music, ho! Oh, music such as charmeth sleep. And when thou wakes, thine own fool's eyes keep. Sound! Music! Come, my queen, take hands with me, and rock the ground whereon these sleepers be. Now thou and I are new in amnity, and will tomorrow midnight solemnly dance in Duke Theseus's house triumphantly, and bless it to all fair prosperity. There shall the pair of faithful lovers be wedded with Theseus all in jollity. Very king, attend and mark. I do hear the morning lark. Mm, then, my queen, in silence sad, trip we after the night's shade. We the globe can compass soon, swifter than the wandering moon. Come, my lord, and in our flight, tell me how it came this night that I, sleeping here, was found with these mortals on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Exit fairies. Enter Theseus, Hippolyta, Aegeus, and Train. No! One of you! Find out the forester, for now our observation is performed, and since we have the verit of the day, my love shall hear the music of my hounds. Uncouple in the western valley, let them go. Dispatch, I say, and find the forester. Exit an attendant. We will, fair queen, up to the mountain's top, and mark the musical confusion of hounds, and echo in conjunction. I was with Hercules and Cadmus once when, in a wood of Crete, they bade the bear with hounds of Sparta. <laughs> Never did I hear such gallant chiding. For besides the groves, the skies, the fountains, every region near seemed all one mutual cry. I never heard so musical a discord, so sweet thunder. My hounds, my hounds are bred out of the Spartan kind. So flute, so sand them, their heads are hung with ears that sweep away the morning dew. Crook kneed and dew laugh like Thessalian bulls, slow in pursuit, matched in mouth like bells on each under each. A cry more tunable was never hollowed to, nor cheered with horn in Crete and Sparta, nor in Thessaly. Judge when you hear. Soft. What nymphs are these? My, my lord, this is my daughter here asleep. And this Lysander, this Demetrius, this Helena, old Nadir's Helena. I wonder of with their being here together. No doubt they rose up early to observe the rite of May and hearing our intent came here in grace our solemnity. But speak, Aegeus. Is this not the day that Hermia should give her answer, should get answer of her choice? It is, my lord. Go, bid the huntsmen wake them with their horns. Good morrow, friends, St. Valentine is past. Begin these wood birds, but to couple now. Pardon, my lord. I pray you all, stand up. I know you two are rival enemies. How comes this gentle concord in the world, that hatred is so far from jealousy, to sleep by hate, and fear no enmity? My lord, I shall reply amazedly, uh, half sleep, half waking, but, but as yet I swear, I cannot truly say how I came here. Uh, but as I think, for truly, would I speak, uh, and now think me, so it is, I came with Hermia hither. Our intent was to be gone from Athens, where we might, without the peril of Athenian law. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Enough. Enough. This, my lord, you have enough. I beg the law, the law, upon his head. Oh, that they should have stolen away. They, you would, Demetrius, thereby to defend you and me. Oh, you of your wife and me of my consent. Oh, chat, she should be your wife. My lord, fair Helena told me of their stealth, of this their purpose hither to this wood. I, in fury, hither followed them. Fair Helena, in fancy, following me. 
but my good lord, I, I want not by what power, but by some power it is. My love to Hermia melted as the snow. It seems to me now as the remembrance of an idled gourd, which in my childhood I did dote upon. And all the faith, the virtue of my heart, the object and the pleasure of mine eye is only Helena. To her, my lord, was I betrothed ere I saw Hermia, but like in sickness did I loathe this food. But as in health, come to my natural taste, now I do wish it, love it, long for it, and will evermore be true to it. Fair lovers, you are fortunately met. Of this discourse, we will hear more anon. Aegeus, I will overbear your will. For in the temple by and by with us, these couples shall be eternally knit. For the morning now is something worn, our purposed hunting shall be set aside. Away with us to Athens, three and three. We'll hold a feast in great solemnity. Come, Hippolyta. Exit Theseus, Hippolyta, Aegeus, and Train. These things seem small and undistinguishable. Methinks I see things with a parted eye where everything seems double. So methinks. And I found my, my Demetrius like a jewel. Mine own and not mine own. Are you sure that we are awake? It, it seems to me that yet we sleep, we dream. <laughs> Do you not you think the Duke was here and, and bid us follow him? Yea, and my father. <laughs> and Hippolyta. And he did bid us follow to the temple. Huh. Why then, we are awake. <laughs> Let's follow him. And by the way, let us recount our dreams. <laughs> Exit Lysander, Demetrius, Hermia, and Helena. When my cue comes, call me and I will answer it. My next is... Oh, fair Pyramus. Hi-ho. Peter Quince. Flute, the bellows bender, snout, the tinker, starveling, God's my life, stolen hence and left me sleep. I have had a most rare vision. I have had a dream, past the wit of man to say what dream it was. Man is but an ass if he go about to expound this dream. Methought I was... Uh, there is no man that can tell what. Methought I was, methought I had. But man is a patched fool, if you will offer to say what methought I had. The eye of man hath not heard. The ear of man hath not seen. Man's hand is not able to taste his tongue to conceive, nor his heart to report what my dream was. I will get Peter Quince to write a ballad of this dream. It shall be called... Bottom's Dream. Because it hath no bottom. And I will sing it in the latter end of the play, before the Duke. Adventure, to make it more gracious, I shall sing it at her death. Exit Bottom. Scene 2. Athens. Quince's House. Enter Quince, Flute, Snout, and Starveling. Have you said to Bottom's house? He cannot he be heard of. Yet? He cannot be heard of. Out of doubt, he is transported. If he come not, then the play is marred. It goes not forward, doth it? It's not possible. You have not a man in all Athens able to discharge Pyramus, but he... No, he hath simply the best wit of any handicraft man in Athens. Yeah, the best person too. And he is a very paramour for a sweet voice. You must say paragon. A paramour is, God bless us, a thing of naught. Enter snug. Masters, the duke is coming from the temple and there is two or three lords and ladies more married. Our sport had gone forward. We had all been made men. Oh, sweet bully bottom. 
Thus hath he lost sixpence a day during his life. He could not have escaped sixpence a day. And the Duke had not given him sixpence a day for playing Pyramus. I'll be hanged. He would have deserved it. Sixpence a day in Pyramus or nothing. Enter bottom. Where are these oh. lads? Where are these lads? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Courageous day, almost happy hour. Masters, I am to discourse wonders. But, but ask me not what, for if I tell you, I am no true Athenian. <laughs> I will tell you everything, right as it fell out. Let us hear, sweet bottom. Not, not a word of me. All I will tell you is that the Duke hath dined. Get your apparel together, good strings to your beards, new ribbons to your pumps. Meet presently at the palace, every man look o'er his part. For the, for the short and the long is... Our play is preferred! <laughs> In any case, let Thisbe have clean linen, and let not him that plays the lion pair his nails, for they shall hang out for the lion's claws. And most dear actors, eat no onions or garlic, for we are to utter sweet breath. And I do not doubt but to hear them say, it is a sweet comedy. No more words. Away, go, away! Exit Omnis. You're muted. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, hi, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, wow, uh, that was so great. And I hope you guys are enjoying this. And I hope you have uh, given a lot of money. But if you haven't, you can go to worlds-elsewhere.com for donation information, how to get uh, give money to community bail funds and how to get uh, your name uh, performed. Uh, <laughs> I'm <laughs> so sorry. Uh, I'm just so happy to be a part of this performance. And I would like to thank everybody who's donated so far. Literature for Lovers, Jen Seggio, Jasmine Garcia, Kenneth Perry, Chris Stellick, Elvis Kanish, Caitlin Callahan, Air, Air Bell, Mackenzie Pratt, Patty Kettler, Emily Strassman, and Bob Oberg. Laura Spear, Jessica Wilhelm, Mel and Arthur Goldslide, Bryant Durrell, Blaze Utz, Joe Gallard. Thank you all so much. And please, everybody, think about following suit. Now we will have a song by Ernie Burnett and George A. Norton. Please welcome Morgan Stutler performing My Melancholy Baby. Come, sweetheart mine, don't sit and pine. Tell me of the cares that make you feel so blue. What have I done? Answer me, hon. Have I ever said an unkind word to you? My love is true and just for you. I'd do almost anything at any time Dear, when you sigh or when you cry Something seems to grip this very heart of mine Come to me, my melancholy babe Cuddle up and don't feel blue. All your fears are foolish fancy, maybe. You know, dear, that I'm in love with you. 
Every cloud must have a silver lining. Wait until the sun shines through. Smile, my honey dear, while I kiss away each tear. Or else I shall be melancholy too. So won't you come to me, my melancholy baby? Cuddle up and don't feel blue. Fears a foolish fancy maybe you know dear that I'm in love with you every cloud must have a silver lining wait until the sun shines through smile my honey dear while I kiss away each tear or else I shall be melancholy Act 5, Scene 1, Athens, the Palace of Theseus. Enter Theseus, Hippolyta, Philostrate, Lords and Attendants. Tis strange, my Theseus, yeah. that these lovers speak of. More strange than true! More strange than true. <clears throat> uh, I may never believe these antique fables, nor these fairy toys. Lovers and madmen have such seething brains, such shaping fantasies, that apprehend more than cool reason ever comprehends. The lunatic, the lover, and the poet are of imagination all compact. One sees more devils than vast hell can hold. That is the madman. The lover, as all frantic, sees Helen's beauty in a brow of Egypt. The poet's eye in fine frenzy rolling doth glance from heaven to earth, from earth to heaven. As imagination and body sport the forms of things unknown, the poet's pen turns them to shapes and gives to airy nothing a local habitation and a name. Shuts such tricks of strong imagination that if it would but apprehend some joy, it comprehends some bringer of that joy. Or in the night, imagining some fear, how easy is a bush supposed to bear? Mm, 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 mm. But all the story of the night told over, and all their minds so transfigured together, more witnesses than dance these images and grows to something of great constancy, but howsoever strange and admirable. Hmm. Oh, here come the lovers, full of joy and mirth. Enter Lysander, Demetrius, Hermia, and Helena. Joy, gentle friends. Joy and fresh days of love accompany your hearts. More than to us wait in your royal walks, your board, your bed. Come now, what masks, what dances shall we have to wear away this long age of three hours between our after supper and our bedtime? Where is our usual manager of mirth? What revels are in hand? Is there no play to ease the anguish of a torturing hour? 
call philosophy. Here, mighty Theseus. Mm. Say, what abridgment have you for this evening? What mask, what music? How should we beguile the lazy time if not with some delight? There is a brief how many sports are right. Uh, make choice of which your highness will see first. Oh. The battle with the centaurs to be sung by Sharon Wong to the harp. Well, none of that. That I've told my love and glory of my kinsman, Hercules. The riot of the tipsy bacchanals tearing Pietro Gagliardi in their rage. <clears throat> that is an old device. And it was played when I was, and it was played when I, from Thieves, came last to conquer. The thrice three muses mourning for the death of Eli Bergmas, late deceased in beggary. That is some satire. Keen and critical, not sorting with a nuptial ceremony. Tedious brief scene of young Pyramus and his love Thisbe, very tragical mirth. Merry and tragical, tedious and brief. That is hot ice and wondrous strange snow. How, how shall we find the concord of this discord? A play there is, my lord, some ten words long, which is as brief as I have known a play. But by ten words, my lord, it is too long, which makes it tedious. For in all the play, not one word is apt, one player fitted. And tragical, my noble lord, it is. For Pyramus therein doth kill himself, which, when I saw rehearsed, I must convince, made mine eyes water. But more merry tears the passion of loud laughter never shed. <laughs> <laughs> what are they that do play it? Um, what are they do? Yeah. Hard-handed men that work in Athens here, which never labored in their minds till now, and now have toiled their unbreathed memories with this same play against your nuptial. Hmm. And we will hear it. No, no, my noble lord, it, it is not for you. I have heard it over, and it is nothing. Nothing in the world, unless you can find sport, in their intents, extremely stretched and conned with cruel pain to do you service. I will hear that play, for never anything can be amiss when simpleness and duty tender it. Go, bring them in, <clears throat> and take your places, ladies. Exit philosophy. I love not to see the wretchedness o'ercharged and duty in his service perishing. Why, gentle sweet, gentle sweet, you shall see no such thing. He says they can do nothing in this kind. The kinder we to give them thanks for nothing. Our sport shall be to take what they mistake and what poor duty cannot do. Noble respect takes it in might, not merit. Where I have some great clerks, where I have come, great clerks have purposed to greet me with premeditated welcomes. Where I have seen them shiver and look pale, make periods in the midst of their sentences, throttle their practice accent and their fears, and in conclusion, dumbly have broke off, not paying me a welcome. Trust me, sweet, out of this silence, yet I picked a welcome. And in the modesty of fearful duty, I read as much as from the rattling tongue of saucy and audacious eloquence. Love, therefore, and tongue-tied simplicity, in least speak most. To my capacity. Re-enter Philostrate. Uh, so, please, your grace, the prologue is addressed. Let him approach. Let him approach. <laughs> It is with our good will that you should think we come not to offend, but with good will to show our simple skill. That is the true beginning of our end. Consider then we come but in despite. We do not come as minding to contest you. Our true intent is all for your delight. We are not here that you should here repent you. The actors 
are at hand and by their show, you shall know all that you are like to know. This fellow does not stand upon points. Uh, he has rid his prologue like a rough colt. He knows not to stop. <laughs> a good moral, my lord. It is not enough to speak, but to speak true. Yeah, indeed. He hath played on his prologue like a child on a recorder. A sound, but not in government. His speech was like a tangled chain. Nothing impaired, but all disordered. Who's next? Enter Pyramus and Thisbe, Wall, Moonshine, and Lion. Gentiles, gentles, perchance you wonder at this show, but wonder on till truth make all things plain. This man is Pyramus. If you would know, this beauteous lady, this be is certain. This man with lime and rough cast doth present wall, that vile wall, which did these lovers sunder. And through wall's chink, poor souls, they are content to whisper, at which let no man wonder. This man with lanthorn, dog, and bush of thorn presenteth moonshine. For if you will know, by moonshine did these lovers think no scorn <laughs> to meet at Ninus tomb, there, there to woo. The, this grisly beast, which lie in height by name, <sighs> the trusty Thisbe coming first by night did scare away, or rather did affright. And as she fled her mantle, she did fall, which lion vile with bloody mouth did stain. Anon comes Pyramus, sweet youth and tall, and finds his trusty Thisbe's mantle slain, where it with blade, with bloody, blameful blade, he bravely broached his boiling bloody breast, and Thisbe, tarrying in mulberry shade, his dagger drew and died. For all the rest, let lion, moonshine, wall, and lovers twain at large disclosure discourse while they here do remain. Exunt prologue, Thisbe, lion, and moonshine. I wonder if the lion be to speak. Well, no wonder, my lord, one lion may when many asses do. <laughs> In this same interlude it doth befall that I, once not by name, present a wall. And such a wall as I would have thee think that had in it a crannied hole or chink through which lovers, Pyramus and Thisbe, did whisper often very secretly. This loam, this rough cast, and this stone doth show that I am that same wall. The truth is so. And this the cranny is, right and sinister, through which the fearful lovers are to whisper. What did you delight? Would you desire lime and hair to speak better? It is the wittiest partition that ever I heard discourse, my lord. Enter Pyramus. Oh, Pyramus draws near the wall. Silence. <clears throat> oh, grim looked knight. O oh, night with hue so black, O oh, night which ever art when day is not, O oh, night, O oh, night, alack, 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 I fear my Thisbe's promise is forgot. And thou, O oh, wall, O oh, sweet, O oh, lovely wall, thou standst between her father's ground and mine, thou wall, O oh, wall, O oh, sweet and lovely wall, show me thy chink to blink through with mine eye. Thanks, courteous wall. Jove, shield thee well for this. But what see I? No, Thisbe do I see. O oh, wicked wall, through whom I see no bliss, cursed be thy stones for thus deceiving me. The wall, methinks, being sensible, should curse again. <laughs> oh, no, in, in truth, sir, he should not. Uh, deceiving me is, is Thisbe's cue. She is to enter now, and I am to spy her through the wall. You shall see, it shall fall pat as I told you. Yonder, she comes. Enter Thisbe. O oh, wall, full often hast thou heard my moans for parting my fair Pyramus and me. My cherry lips have often kissed thy stones, thy stones with lime and hair knit up in thee. I see a voice, 
Now will I to the chink to spy, and I can hear my Thisbe's face. <gasps> Thisbe! My love thou art, my love, I think. Think what thou will, I am thy lover's grace, and like Lymander am I trusty still. And I like Helen till the fates me kill. Not Shaphalus to Procus was so true. As Shaphalus to Procus, I to you. Oh, kiss me through the hole of this wall. I kiss the wall's hole, not your lips at all. Wilt thou at Ninny's tomb meet me straightway? Tide life, tide death, I come without delay. Exit Pyramus and Thisbe. Thus have I, wall, my part discharged so, and being done, thus wall away doth go. Exit wall. Well, now is the mural down between the two neighbors. <laughs> no remedy, my lord, when walls are so willful to hear without warning. Ding. <laughs> this is the silliest stuff that I ever heard. The best in this kind are but shadows, and the worst are no worst, if imagination amend them. <laughs> it must be your imagination then, and not theirs. <laughs> if we imagine no worse than if we imagine no worse of them than they of themselves, they may pass for excellent men. Here come two noble beasts, a man and a lion. Enter lion and moonshine. You ladies, you whose Gentle hearts do fear the smallest monstrous mouse that doth creep on floor uh, may now perchance both quake and tremble here when lion rough and wildest rage doth roar. But to know that I, one snug the joiner, am no lion fell nor else no lion dam and for I should, as lion come in strife, into this place twere pity on my life. A very gentle beast, a good conscience. The very best of the beast, my lord, that e'er I saw. Oh, this lion is a very fox for his valor. True, and a goose for his discretion. <laughs> Not so, my lord, for his valour cannot carry his discretion, and the fox carries the goose. Mm. His discretion, I'm sure, cannot carry his valour, for the goose carries not the fox. It is well. Leave it to his discretion, and uh, let us listen to the moon. Peace, Lanthorn, doth the horned moon present. He should have worn the horns on his head. <laughs> He is no crescent, and his horns are invisible within the circumference. This land horn doth the horned moon present I, the man in the moon, do seem to be. This is the greatest error of all the rest. The man should be put into the lantern. How else is it the man in the moon? He dares not come there for the candle, for you see it is already in snuff. <laughs> I am aware of this moon, I would he were change. <laughs> it appears by his small life discretion that he is in the wane, but yet in courtesy and all reason we must stay the time. Uh, proceed, moon. All I have to tell you is that this lanthorn is the moon. I the man in the moon, this thorn bush, my thorn bush, and this dog. <gasps> My dog. Why, all these should be in the lanthorn, for all these are in the moon. Oh, but silence, here comes Thisbe. Enter Thisbe. This is old Mimi's tomb. Where is my love? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Thisbe runs off. Well roared lion. Well roared well to be. <laughs> and well shown moon. Truly, truly, the moon shines with a good grace. The lion shakes this bee's mantle and exit. Well moused lion. And so the lion vanished. <laughs> and then came Pyramus. Enter Pyramus. Sweet moon, 
I thank thee for thy sunny beams. I thank thee, moon, for shining now so bright. For by thy gracious, golden, glittering gleams, I trust to take in truest of true Thisbe sight. But stay, O oh, spite, but mark, O oh, night, what dreadful dole is here? Eyes, do you see? How can it be? O oh, dainty duck, O oh, dear, thy mantle good, what stained with blood? <gasps> Approach, ye furies fell. Oh, fate, come, come, cut thread and thrum, quail, crunch, conclude, and quell. This passion and the death of a dear friend would go near to make a man look sad. Be shrew my heart, but I pity the man. <laughs> oh, wherefore, nature, didst thou lion's frame, since lion vile hath here deflowered, my dear, which is no, no, which was the fairest dame that lived, that loved, that liked, that looked with cheer. <gasps> Come, Tears, confound, out, sword, and wound, the pap of Pyramus, I, that left pap where heart doth hop, stabs himself. Thus, I die, I, thus, thus, thus. Now am I dead, now am I fled. My soul is in the sky. Tongue, lose thy light. Moon, take thy flight. Exit moonshine. Thou die. 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 Pyramus dies. Die. No die, but an ace for him, for he is but one. But less than an ace, man, for he is dead. He, he is nothing. With the help of a surgeon, he might yet recover. And prove an ass. How chance Moonshine is gone before Thisbe comes back and finds her lover. She'll find him by starlight. Oh, here she comes. And her passion ends the play. Re-enter Thisbe. Methinks she should not use a long one for... Such a Pyramus. I hope she will be brief. A moat will turn the balance. Which Pyramus? Which this be is the better? He for a man, God warrant us. She for a woman, God bless us. But she hath spied him already with those sweet eyes. And thus she means Vadilicet. Sleep? My love? What? Dead, my dove? O oh, Pyramus, arise! Speak! Speak! Quite dumb, dead, dead, a tomb must cover thy eyes. These lips, this cherry nose, these yellow cowslip cheeks are gone. Are gone. Lovers make moan. His eyes were green as leeks, so sisters three, come, come to me with hands as pale as milk, lay them in gore, since you have sure the shears his thread of silk tongue not a word come trusty sword come blade my breast imbue isby stabs herself and farewell friends thus this be ends adieu Bisbee dies. Moonshine and Lion are left to bury the dead. Aye, and Wall too. <laughs> oh, no, I assure you, uh, the wall is down that part of their fathers. Uh, will it please you to hear the epilogue or to hear a burgomaster dance between two of our company? No! Epilogue! I, I pray you for. <coughs> Your play needs no excuse. Never excuse. 
For when the players are all dead, their needs none be blamed. <laughs> Mary, if he that writ it had played Pyramus and hanged himself in Thisbe's garter, it would have been a fine tragedy. And, and so it is, truly. And very notably discharged. But come, your burger mask. Let your epilogue alone. of midnight hath told 12 lovers to bed. It is almost fairy time. I fear we shall outsleep the coming morn. As much as we this night have overwatched, this palpable gross play hath well beguiled the heavy gate of night. Sweet friends, to bed. A fortnight hold me this solemnity in nightly revels and new jollity. Exit all. Enter Puck. Now the hungry lion roars, and the wolf beholds the moon, whilst the heavy plowman snores, all with weary task for death. Now the wasted brands do glow, while the screech owl screeching loud puts the wretch who lies in woe in remembrance of a shroud. Now it is the time of night that the graves all gaping wide, every one lets forth its sprite and the churchway paths to glide. And we fairies that do run by the triple Hecate's team, from the presence of the sun following darkness like a dream now are frolic. Not a mouse shall disturb this hallowed house. I am sent with broom before to sweep the dust the door. Enter Oberon and Titania with their train. Through the house, give, gathering light by the dead and drowsy fire. Every elf and fairy sprite hop as light as bird from briar, and this ditty after me sing and dance trippingly. First rehearse your song by rote, to each word a warbling note. Hand in hand with fairy grace, we will sing and bless this place. I will twine mid the ringlets of my raven black hair. With the lily so pale and the rose and so fair, the myrtle so bright with an emerald hue, and the pale arenatus with eyes of bright blue, I will sing and I'll dance 
and my land shall be gay. I will seize this wild weeping, drive sorrow away. Though my heart is now breaking, he never shall know that his name made me tremble and my pale cheeks to glow. I will think of him never, I'll be wildly gay. I will charm every heart and the crowd I will sway. I will live yet to see him regret the dark hour, one that neglected the frail wild flower. Oh, he told me he loved me and promised to love me. Through will and misfortune, all others above. Another has won him a misery to tell. He left me in silence, no word of. He taught me to love him, he clothed me his That blossomed for him all the brighter each hour. But I awoke from my dreaming, my idol was clay. My visions of love have faded. Now, until the break of day, through this house each fairy stray, to the best bride bed will we, which by us shall blessed be, and the issue there create ever shall be fortunate. So shall all the couples three ever in true loving be, and the blots of nature's hand shall not in their issue stand, never mole, hair lip, nor scar, nor mark prodigious, such as they are despised in nativity, shall upon their children be. With this field do consecrate, every fairy take his gate, and each several chamber bless through this palace with sweet peace. And the owner of it blessed ever shall in safety rest, trip away, make no stay, meet me all by break of day. Exit Oberon, Titania, and Train. If we, shadows, have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear, and this weak and idle theme no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend. And, as I am an honest pup, if we have unearned luck now to scape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends ere long, else the puck a liar call. And so, good night unto you all. Give me your hands if we be friends, and Robin shall restore amends. Exit Puck. End of
Out. out. Oh. Everybody out. Out, out, out. OK. Wow. Uh, what a great performance. Uh, thank you for everybody. We're going to do a, a quick talk after this. Uh, uh, but right now, I just want to thank uh, some more people. Uh, Kelly Russo, Ryan Richardson, Ben Creighton, Rhoda CF. Thank you. Uh, it was just an excellent performance. Uh, and uh, now I'd like to invite uh, the founders of this wonderful theater company to come back on. <sighs> questions. Uh, I'm going to sleep for a week. <laughs> I wish I had that luxury. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. Oh, it's over. It's over. It's over. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, thank you so much for um, not only just everyone in the company's hard work, just for a week, for two weeks. Um, uh, remind me when we posted the audition notice? Uh, um, middle of last week? Yeah, like the end of last week. Um, yeah. What week before? before? Yeah, like yeah, we did uh, auditions like Tuesday and Thursday of last week. Finalized casting Thursday, mm -hmm. first table read Friday, and we just spent the the week. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just read. Sorry, I just read Hillary in the chat. What's up, puckers? Don't forget to smash that like button and smash that subscribe and ring that bell for more casual <laughs> drugging drugging strangers, strangers content. content. <laughs> uh, Oh, I love my cast. I love my cast. Everyone in the cast was so good. Yes, yes. Oh, Everybody God. was amazing. So <sighs> Sorry about that dude who played Theseus. I don't know what he was going. He was checking his phone. <laughs> no, all the time. right? What, what the hell? What's uh, the deal? Look, you, you can't get everything right. Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, the uh, masks were going to be the fairies originally. Like, I worked really, really hard on them, and they just didn't work in the actual thing. So I just did it at the last minute. But I don't know. Kill your darlings. Real killer, exactly. Yeah, real, real killer, killer darlings. So uh, I definitely want to yes. thank, we had three pages of donors. Wow. Three whole pages of donors. Thank you all. Thank not, you bad all. For, uh, not bad for a, not bad for first so performance, much. yeah. Yeah. From the people who donated, you know, single digits to the people who were able to afford to donate a whole lot more than that. <laughs> um, I will put together a total and we will be including that in the thank you video. You can still donate through um, end of the day, tomorrow, Sunday, end of day being West Coast, because that's where I am. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, thank you all so much for tuning in and keeping us company and humoring us with this crazy project we came up with and donating. Thank you so much. Um, we will also be putting together um, a list of anti-racism education resources for those who want to know about great books to read and people to follow on Twitter, on Instagram, if you're interested in the political situation that's going on right now and where that came from and how we got to where we are today. And thank you so, so much for helping us produce this production because the audience is really just as much a part of it as any actor. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's true of uh, theater as a medium. It's why I got into theater originally. Um, because of that direct audience actor interaction, um, which you really don't get from YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I guess this is only like natural that like finally after 10 years of doing online video, I'd finally do theater online. Um, so yeah, I guess, yeah, I had the idea to like maybe potentially do like uh, uh, stage readings online, like over Zoom. Uh, for this, um, but just everyone we cast just brought so much to it, and just became so much more than the table read that I thought we were gonna get, and just, uh, and, and and it was a risk because you know the way Zoom works, everyone is responsible for their own costuming, their own makeup, um, their own exits and entrances. Like they had to turn their own uh, cameras off. For Zoom, we had to rehearse that. We had to rehearse the uh, curtain calls uh, for that exact thing. But um, yes, it was a lot of work. Uh, for just a week. 
we're seeing some wonderful reactions in the chat, which we really appreciate. The People chat things like made shade. this for me. It really did. Hearing you guys just make memes and jokes and make smart-ass commentary just gave me so much life. So yeah. thank, thank you all for being in the peanut gallery and given us what you got so thank you guys and i am looking forward to all the gifts that are inevitably going to come out of this <laughs> I mean, if you don't have a peanut gallery you don't have a show it's just exactly. like a part of theater yeah yeah uh part of the, the joy for me was just watching the reaction in the chat uh, and seeing how much it lined up with the actual talks that we had during rehearsal <laughs> uh like um demetrius a wonderful actor he earlier in the chat someone said that he looked like davis arini uh <laughs> And earlier, like in rehearsal, we had actually asked, like, is Demetrius an MRA? Because, like, because, <laughs> like, he kind of has that energy. I mean, he like enters the uh, thing with Hermia, the relationship with Hermia, not because he likes her, but because he's like duty bound. Yeah. And so there is that. Um, but I mean, uh, Midsummer. Midsummer was like the play that got me into Shakespeare. I first saw it uh, when I was eleven, twelve, thirteen. Uh, actually, Ariel, we went to high school together. Yes. Do you remember? Do you remember that production? I do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mostly remember um, who played Fisby. The, the Fisby was amazing. I I remember. I do. It, the play within the play was excellent. <laughs> yes. Like, when when Fisby like finds Bottom dead, the the, the actor is, um, he ran up to the body and just like, oh my god, and he like goes for Bottom's crotch first and then his face and like a split <laughs> second and it's just it was <sighs> anyway it, it is a perfect play I've never seen a Pyramus and Thisbe fail on stage uh, and part of it is I mean part of it our job has just been easy because it is such a good play it's hard to do wrong um in my experience but uh I've been talking a lot uh David um you were there with me. You were the assistant director for, um, for all the rehearsals, and uh, uh, you saw just how much work um, uh, everyone everyone brought to this. Uh, do you have any any to say? I, I mean, I've I mean, there's so much to say, and also just anything I might conceive of saying would be insufficient. Uh, though I will say, uh, anybody who I'm seeing some questions in the chat while we're talking and we're, we're probably going to go for like another five ish, 10 minutes, maybe max. Yeah. So if you have particular Do a little cute questions, I... yeah, if you've got particular questions, throw them in the chat, we'll try and address those. Uh, but in general, just about the rehearsal process, this was just, it, it was wild and inspiring to see people just coming together, bringing their a game with relatively little, prompting in some cases mm -hmm. uh, and you know I mean we were able to actually recreate some of the magic of theater that you know I've only experienced in a rehearsal or on a stage I was actually able to get some of those feelings from what we were doing here and I think that's a testament and, and for, for anybody who has experience performing either uh, voice acting where it's just you in a booth or yeah. any other types of performance or presentation even in business context youtubing it, yeah when it's you on a zoom microphone and, like you don't have the energy of the room to draw mm -hmm. you just don't um and so it's just that much more demanded of the performer and to see what i thought could only really come from people working together in a space where we were actually physically apart, that was downright inspirational. So that's what so I got. A couple of people <laughs> have asked us what's next for Worlds Elsewhere. Oh God. Um, we have- Sleep. Something rest. I'm gonna sleep. Rest is next. First. Well, I'm gonna sleep and I have a video essay that I have scripted but not edited about Vine. <laughs> that should go up by the end of the month. So uh, update on the- I know a lot of you have been complaining about the, the direction of my channel lately, and I know, I see your comments, I read you guys, and you know, thanks for subscribing and hitting that like button and smashing that subscribe bell, uh, but but yeah, I have been, I have not done video essays lately. I've been streaming games, I streamed a game about Hamlet recently, uh, but yeah, I haven't done video essays because I've been doing this. Because uh, not just this production, but also this company, because Worlds Elsewhere, 
Worlds Elsewhere was put together uh, sometime mid-May, I want to say. Yeah, we had our first uh, read in on Memorial Day, actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we did not stop with a Midsum we did not start with a Midsummer Night's Dream. Uh, we started with a very different play, um, King Which we Ubu. will still be putting on. Yes, at some uh, point. We'll come back. We'll come yeah, back. We will it. absolutely pu be putting on our avant-garde production of King Ubu at some point, hopefully later this year. But um, uh, yeah, we realized the time wasn't right, and the staging was a lot more complex than we thought. And also, it's a weird, weird play that inspired surrealists and Dadaists, and I wanted to throw it together within a week, <laughs> like a moron. Yeah, so, no. Yeah. Um, so the thing about being a professional YouTuber, your sense of a personal schedule is just shot. <laughs> it, it's, I can do a, I can put together a video essay in a week. I can finish this editing session by tonight. You know, it's just so. X. X. Oh, by the way, <laughs> yes. So I gotta say thank you, Alana, stage manager, and thank you, David, our producer, AD, just for uh, pacing me and t picking up slack and just you know being absolute rock stars through this whole thing, through the founding, through this first performance. Thank you so much. It was a labor of love in every sense, and thank you, Kyle, <laughs> for being. Uh, the center and inspiration to get yes. us all moving. Yes. So watch uh. this space if you're interested in other productions from Worlds Elsewhere, as well as all of Kyle's amazing work. Smash um, that subscribe button, like the bell. <laughs> like the bell! And the worlds-elsewhere.com website will continue to be updated as there is more about the company. Mm -hmm. And if you are interested in the company we are always looking for more people to act more people to help be creative so you can drop us an email the email is, is both in the doobly-doo and on the website and just let us know even if you've never done this before because i this is my first time in front of a camera on youtube but here be dragons everything that can be learned that can be taught so if you're interested in helping us out Drop us an email. If you want to just see what we're coming up with next, watch this space. Smash uh, that that Sabell. Like Sabelle. the <laughs> like the smush. Like the like YouTube. Like me. Like me. We all like. Uh, I, I hate yeah. doing YouTube. Like if Kyle's some at her. Uh. <laughs> and now they're just making Blink twice ropes. if the bell. Blink twice if the bell is pleasurable, says the chat. Can, can I? Can we just get some thanks and some shout-outs for our moderators for keeping our audience yes. in line? Thanks. And protecting Thank you, us from idiots and assholes <sighs> and anybody that was going to potentially ruin this. But yeah, I mean, we're doing this like for charity. We're doing this in protest against police brutality and uh, in support of Black Lives Matter and the protests. And yes. I, I mean, I don't know about you, but. Uh, okay. Since the protest began, I've been going to bed every night worried, and I've been waking up every morning a little bit more reassured just knowing that the protests went out every night after. Just the constant change. It is inspiring. Uh, and and, and that's, um, why, yeah, that, that, that's why we wanted to make sure that we were supporting the people who were putting their bodies on the front lines in as material a way as we could. Yeah. It's... Because like when you're working here in, at home, like we all are now, it's just very tough to like. Yeah, you really get your priorities in order. Yeah. Okay. One minute to wrap. Thank you, one. Thank you, one. Mm. All right. Uh, hey. There are a lot, a lot of, lot of good questions in chat. Will we be having Hail open the cone? auditions? Yes. Maybe. Uh, Video land came up when when I was flashing the lights during intermission. The video land wasn't set up correctly, so all people could see was the code, and people were saying the cone has spoken and so forth. So, hail the cone! Hail the cone! <laughs> hail the cone! Please explain why all you are so awesome. The chat cries. Uh, we need more than thirty seconds for that. Sorry. Dumb luck. Absolute <laughs> dumb luck. I don't deserve to be here. My friends and, and life, my loved ones. That, and, that's and, who makes me awesome. I, I like how like Kyle and I are balancing each other out in that answer. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Uh, That's it. I love everyone in this stream. <laughs> we love you too, Kyle. Uh, uh, right, good night. Off, Death to fascism. Yes. Yes. 